Good evening, good evening, good evening. This is After Dark Conversations with Yvonne Michelle. Yes, and tonight's show, we are going to be talking to the women for the first hour. And then we are going to introduce the men into the Zoom room. We are asking the women, what do you want in a man? If you watch last week's show that you will hear, the men were talking and the men were saying about what they want. And they also made mention that women want a whole heap of things. So tonight we're going to find out exactly what women want. We're going to bring the men in the room and then we're going to have a conversation about this. Now, this show is for you if you are single, uh, if you are a single person um, that's looking to be in a relationship. This conversation is for you if you are married and have something to give, have something to advise, you know, if you're happy in your relationship then you come in and talk to us talk to us the ladies come on in to the zoom room so for those of you who want to come in come in but i'm saying this to you now only come in if you're prepared to talk we don't want spectators in the zoom room the zoom room is for action so if you my glasses seem a bit crooked oh so if you know that you've got something to say come Come hither, come quickly. Come on, ladies, your time, your time, your time. The men, the men, the men are waiting for you. We, they want to hear what we've got to say. Come on, ladies. The men are going to be in Facebook. They're going to be watching. They're going to be taking notes because they're coming to put questions to us, ladies. So come on. Good evening, good evening, good evening, good evening, good evening. Ladies, ladies, ladies. Let us. Okay, Tisha will be there in five minutes. That's fine. Fantastic. Here we go. So, guys, on Facebook, apologies, we are running a little bit late, but you know what? You know we're going to go over, don't you? Because we nearly all. Here we go. People are coming in now. Just you, right? So, Barbara. Here you are. Oh, there you go. I can see you, Barbara. Yes, 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 yes. Wonderful, 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 wonderful. Come on, ladies. I'm going to give you a few more minutes and then we're going to start. Those of you that are on Facebook, welcome, welcome, welcome to the gentlemen. I know you are itching to get inside, um, to come inside this Zoom room later on tonight. So, we're going to be talking openly and frankly about what we want, all right? This is about what we want as women, what we're looking for in a man, what are our expectations, all right? So we're gonna have, and, and Johnny, um, Mia, um, Maya, last week, he posed a question to the men. And his question is, are you man enough to help the woman that you meet, the new person that you meet, are you willing to help her with any baggage that she may have? Are you willing? And so I'm going to throw the same question out. So we're just going to talk. So we're going to start. Everyone's going to just say who they are. They do that kind of thing. Just say hello to everybody. And then we're going to get into the conversation. I just want to say good evening to everybody on Facebook. Do make sure that you put all your comments in the thread. We're going to try and um, keep up to date with what you're saying. Uh, JJ, are you coming in? Um, yeah, uh, and I'm going to uh, see where the ladies are coming in they're coming in they're coming in right so good evening i'm lying right, let's on my phone. you ladies in diane how are you doing am i am i looking okay because i'm on my phone on here. <laughs> hang on there you go is that better no it can't hear you hang on um all right let's sort you out and then 
go let's go to Cheryl Cheryl hi good evening everyone hi how are you doing are you kidding me can you hear me are you kidding me there is take oh. your microphone because we what is hear. going on this evening I can hear everyone I can hear everyone. no no I can't hear any of you I can hear you oh yeah we're here can you hear me hello yeah. yes <laughs> <laughs> Okay. <laughs> yes, I can hear you. Welcome, Don. Welcome, welcome. Just let us know what your name. Well, I've said your name, Don. What? Uh, your name, what you do, and that's it, really. Just introduce yourself. Okay, so I'm Cheryl. Hi, how are you doing? I do a lot of things. I'm a singer. I, I do job finding. I work in a shop. I do all kinds of stuff. But yeah, that's me, Cheryl. Hi. Good. Hi, Cheryl. Thank you for being here. Okay, who's next? I'm going to do this really quickly. Oh, okay. Come in, Barbara. Then I can see the hand going up. <laughs> Hello. Hi, my name's Barbara. Um, okay, I do also quite a few things. I write, I sing, I face paint, um, I bake, and yeah, amongst other stuff. But yeah, that's those are the main things that I do. So hey. Oh, hey, everyone. Lovely. Thank you for being here. Who's next? Diane, you coming in? Yeah, should I go? Yeah. Yeah, you go. Right, I'm Diane and I, I've just been out for a run because I'm doing 5K, um, couch to 5K. So I'm on my fifth run tonight. Um, so I'm getting there. I'm a holistic therapist, um, do loads of different things and drum in. And I've also got a house cleaning business. Oh. And I'm into classic cars. Big time. Big time. Right. Okay, <laughs> okay lovely. Lovely. Ruth, come on in. Thank you for being here. Good evening. Good evening. Good evening, everyone. I'm Ruth Carter. I'm a coach and NLP practitioner. I work with young people, families, and also work with parents who are going through court issues. So that's what I do in a little bit of a nutshell. Okay, lovely. Thank you for being here. Are there any other ladies that's coming in to the Zoom room? Because I can see Karen here. I can see Lolly. I can see, yeah. So are you ladies coming in? Well, you've got to half past. We'll close the, the, the Zoom room at, at, at half past. I said that to the, for the men last week. I'll do the same for the women. Right, so ladies, 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 ladies. The question is, what do you want from a man? What is it that you really, really want? Now, we heard from the men last week. Um, I don't know if you've all heard last week's show, um, but pretty much what was said is that women want a lot of things and that men are not complicated, that we just require so much, so much things. So who, who actually wants to, to, to kick off in this conversation? I'll go first because um, I've got quite a lot to say in my new man that I want. Right, okay. Let's I hear want it. One, right, I want one that's really supportive in my in my growth. So one that's not going to feel threatened and one that's going to want to see me expand personally and business-wise and, and help me make those, those moves, really, to greater things. And, and not try to stop me and put barriers in the way. And, okay. to, and to love me for who I am. Just acceptance and, I'll, and, and for me to let, accept him, you know? So mutual respect, really. Um, that's kind of it, really. It's not much to ask, is it? <laughs> well, 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 no. It's not really. So. <laughs> so, okay. So, who else wants to go? Thank you for that, Diane. I, I'm going to come, come back. I'm, I'm making notes. I, I am going to come back on these All things. Right. Okay, go go for it, Ruth. Yeah. Um. So, I'm also looking for someone who is caring, kind, supportive, who likes to live life and explore different things. Someone who wants to come together and build from this point on with the duration of time that we have left. 
um, basically. I'm looking for a long-term relationship and commitment, you know, for mutual respect, encouragement. And, and I have to agree with the guys, they're right. We do have a list. And I don't think it's long. I think these are just a list of characteristics, um, um, a, a list of like ideas, a list of what we would want and desire in a partner. I'm sure like they just don't want a woman. I'm sure they want their woman to look and act and be a certain way. And I have that kind of thing as well that, you know, that I don't know what he looks like per se, but you kind of have some kind of idea that, you know, you'd want a nice black man or a nice, maybe, but- You broke up there, Ruth. You broke, you're breaking you up. No, so behaviors, pardon? You broke you up, it just kind of falls. So you said you were probably the internet. Apologies. No worries. But those are some of the things, and I think they're just list of quality. And if a woman can't really say that to a man, then that would also, you know, have an impact on one of the major factors of having communication, because that's something I'd like to have in that where we can talk, laugh, chill, relax have company, companionship, and all those. And it's quite a lot. But I feel that all those things are in a person. Okay. And that's my little bit for now. So that's your list, not leaving anything out? Well, there's loads, but uh, this is just in a nutshell. Okay. All right, who's going next? All right, go, go, Bob. Bob's okay. got finger up. So go, go, go. So I wouldn't say that the list is complicated because there was a lot of mention of like women being complicated in, in what they want. For me, it is a person who I can have as a partner, like a life partner. And I mean like a life partner in every different aspect of each other's life, not just for me, but obviously I, I'd, I'd hope that we would complement each other in regards to, you know, the goals that he has, the goals that I have, that we can support each other to, to achieve our goals, to love each other, you know, unconditionally, um, to commu communication for me, as Ruth said, is massive. Because if you can't communicate, to be honest, there isn't any hope for your relationship because a lot of things that spur from that relationship or in that relationship, you know, it, 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 it starts, it stems from communication. So communicating even from, you know, the earliest of stages, what it is that you want from that person for me is really important. Um, but just having a person that, you know, we can enjoy life with as well and have fun with each other, um, you know, do different things, explore different things together, enjoy the same interests together also. But even if they have different interests, still be a little bit open to maybe trying the interests that they have. I think it's, it's, it's um, also about a little bit of compromise with regards to, okay, I haven't maybe, tried to go rock climbing before but oh you know I, I haven't thought about it before I've never you know that hasn't cropped into my head before so just being a little bit open as well but I don't think that my expectations would would be seen as complicated it's just kind of like you have the, you kind of set standards in your head of you know what you're what you want in a person in a partner and for me it has changed it has changed because when I was younger I would probably say I would probably put up with a lot more nonsense <laughs> to be fair but now my, my standards are higher I haven't got time to waste and I need to make sure that when I choose that I'm choosing the right the right person for me so yeah that's it okay lovely thank you for that and next in Cheryl come in hi well I, I guess for me it's important that a part lets me be me <laughs> which uh, I, I think sometimes is very difficult because when you spend a lot of time um, as a single person and, and having to do what you need to do um, to pay the bill, um, you develop your own. So I don't necessarily want a man that I'm going to be carrying around with a handbag. I'm, I'm, quite, inter I'm quite happy for a man to have his own interest. Trust, communication, support, 
And um, I, I think what a lot of people don't think about is end goals. What you want when you can't, uh, you know, when the body starts breaking down and you're getting older, where do you want to be? Do you want to be in another country? You know, I think those are conversations that you need to have. So someone that has a similar kind of outlook to me as to how our lives to be and how at, at, at our age, we have blended families, how how that's going to work and the dynamics of that as well. So, yeah, so, and a, a sense of humor is a must. Yeah, and, and being to try new things because I get bored very easily. Well, yeah, it is what it is. <laughs> Basically, it's someone that allows me to be deep and is supportive, and it, it has still got an interest in life, um, in all kinds of aspects of life, and, and is kind. That's a key thing, really. Are not kind, kind and respectful to other people too. Right, so I'm trying to write down um, all these things and try to get you ladies in at the same time. So thank you very much. Charles, thank you very much. And yes, you did. Um, you mentioned that about the end goal and that was a good thing to bring up, I think. Right, okay. So I'm gonna go into the, the, the uh, Facebook shortly, but I just want the ladies to just say what they are, what they want in a man. All right, so is that Grace there? Hi, Grace. Um, let's hear from you, Grace. You're a bit dark tonight. The light needs to be in front of you. Can you hear me? Take your, you've got your um, mute on. Oh, let me see if I can get to oh, Unmute. Okay. Oh, oh, I just heard you. There you go. Talk. Hi ladies, how you doing? Right. Hi Grace. Right. So Grace, what what yeah. is you, what is it you want in a man? What what is it in this man that you're looking for? Well, um the man I'm looking for firstly he must have his own teeth. Okay. Yeah, I like man with teeth because there's no point biting my neck and the teeth come out. No, but um Seriously, um, I like a guy with a good sense of humor. Uh, I like a guy with a good uh, family value because obviously I have a child and if he has a child, he must um, know to be a good father to the child, whether it's a girl or a, or a boy. Oh, well, it'd be a young man now. So he has to have that, that kind of value. Um, I, he's got to have a good sense of humour. Mm -hmm. He's got to know he if he's gonna marry, if he's gonna take me on, he has to know where he's going. He has to have a good direction because no point going going out with me and I can't go where you're going. And I meant mentally, mm -hmm. right? Um. Um. Yeah, so he has to know where he's going before he carry me anyway. So obviously he must have that in line. Mm -hmm. um, what else? Can dress. I like a guy who can dress. I like a guy who, who I can have a good discussion with. It's not debate, but discussion. Because obviously there's things that I know, mm -hmm. right, that he doesn't know and then things he doesn't know I want him to teach me because I'm a teachable person. I love to learn. I love to learn on the go. Um, he's got to, well, I don't know about traveling now because we can't go anywhere right now. So traveling's out of the question, but I just want a good conversation with him and know where his heart is at. And um, he must have a little bit of candy in him eye because, because if I'm vexed with him and I look at him and he look cute, I don't vex with him anymore. But if he don't have the kind of cuteness, then I can't be vexed with him for long. I'm going to look on him. Should I glad him there with me? You know what I mean? But yeah. that is my sense of humor anyway. But um, yeah, I, li I like a responsible man. A man, 
a man good with finance, a man who'd like to spoil me rotten because I will spoil him. A man doesn't get a queen, a man, a, a man don't become a king unless he treats a woman like a queen. Well, you're dropping lyrics tonight. You're dropping lyrics. Say that again. A man doesn't get a queen unless a man doesn't, yeah, a man doesn't become a king if he doesn't treat the woman like a queen. Okay. Men, I hope you're listening. Because <laughs> they're coming in to talk to us about it, Queen. Right, okay, got it. Okay, so who's next? Who's next, guys? Who's next? Thank you very much, Grace. Thank um, you. We've got Karen and Tisha. Oh. Who's going first? Go, Tisha, come, come in. Hi. Hi, hi, hi. How are you doing? I'm good, I'm good. Um, so what am I looking for from a man? Someone, yeah, someone who can communicate um, with me. So that's really important. Someone who is driven. Yeah, knows where they're going. They might not be there at the moment, but they know how to get there. And yeah, they've got, yeah, got massive drive. Yeah, I love humour. I love humour. Someone who's funny. I love that. I love good banter. Good banter. That's, yeah, so important to me. And someone who can have fun. Um, yeah, I remember, yeah, if they're, yeah, they, people can be old before their time if they, if they don't know how to have fun. I think that's really important. Um, yeah, someone who's nurturing and loving and kind. Um, here you go, here's a list now. Um, <laughs> I'm going to roll it out now. Um, loving and kind. Um, oh um what else just open open to new things experience experiencing new new paths someone who's into self-development i think that's been a, a major one for me i can't have i can't deal with people are closed mind minded or stuck in in society um mm -hmm. yeah i really want someone who's who, who's on a path of self-actualization and um, that we can grow together and explore, yeah, new new things together. So, yeah, I think okay. yeah, that's it. Okay, that's that's very. Oh uh, yeah, and looks wise, I haven't got a particular type, but someone who's confident and's got a bit of yeah, a bit of swag. Yeah, swag is that still a word? Swagger. Yeah, just confident and dresses well. Yeah, there's more. I'm gonna stop now. <laughs> I'm gonna stop. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Okay. Thank you for that, Tisha. Karen, come in. Let us know what is it that you are looking for in a man. Hello, ladies. Um, I trust that you're all well. Uh, so, firstly, I'm not single. I am a two year relationship, but <clears throat> no ring on the finger yet. So, it's not a done deal. Yeah. Mm -hmm. okay, so, um, what I would say I'm looking for in a man, and hopefully I found it, is I like someone who's logical. I'm a very logical person. I don't suffer fools gladly. I don't like waffle. I like straight down the line people. You know, I'm not saying that they can't be great areas, but I just like people who sit, who, you know, just don't try to feed me any lines of ignorance and think I'm going to take it. Um, and if I don't understand, I'm going to ask until it becomes logical to me. That's just the main thread of my being, I suppose. I like some adventurous. And in that, that could be creative. I like traveling a lot. I like um, anthropology. So anything to do with learning about people, new experiences. As Tishia said, no one's stuck in their ways or, you know, confined by any boxes. I'm not a stickler for rules. So like, if I want to like, like you know snaffle a nice beer glass from the pub I don't want somebody saying oh, 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 oh I don't like all of that I like fun I like you know I like crossing lines being a bit on the edge and that's what I need I need someone who's like that I don't like anyone who's self-righteous I don't want anyone who's overly religious I like someone who's open to ideas experiences people culture <laughs> and on and on I love someone who's ambitious Fine. at this point I'm at now I'm not into 
finding anyone who's at the beginning of their journey. You've got to be really, you know, 20 years. No way they're going. Mm. You're going to be, you know, retiring. We're going to be traveling the world. So they have to be at a certain stage of their life. I'm not into any start me ups when it comes to a man. Um, and then <laughs> in addition to that, I guess it's the three C's, uh, which is compatibility. So, you know, we got kind of like rolling like this, you know. Mm -hmm. Not much clashing, just kind of getting on. Uh, chemistry. Yeah. Chemistry is very important, you know, because um, I like being in love and I like the romance of it and all of that. And chemistry to me, they got to smell good, you know, they got to look good. And this overall, just a strong connection. You know, sometimes finishing my sentences, knowing what I'm about and I could understand what they're about. It's not all on one real street at all. Um, and that's that's it really. Okay. Well, in, in terms of what they look like, I, ha I I'm not too sure about the outer package. It's mm -hmm. the inside that I'm the it's the gift. It's what inside I'm more sure on, but the outside is I've got limits one way or another, but there's a whole range in between. Okay. Thank you for that. So we've got quite a range of things. But there are some common threads, as there were with the men, there are some common threads with the women. And the common, th the most common thread is communication. We like to communicate and we like to communicate on a high level, which means talking, right? One of the things I'm going to throw it out there because I don't want to forget. One of the things that the men said last week is that sometimes they don't want to talk. They just want to come in. I want to hear no conversation. They just want to come in and they just want peace. Right? They just want peace. Right? So, guys, I hope that you are listening. Lolly Bailey, are you coming into the Zoom room? Just asking. Um, the code is out there. Um, the password is Radio 101. Come in if you want to come in. All right. So... Okay. Right. So we've got some of the other females are saying, JJ saying, I would like unconditional love. What does that look like to you, JJ? Um, and I'm going to start throwing these questions out. One of the questions, one of the questions, oh, let me just um, mention what Johnny said. Johnny uh, Mayer says, he agrees, I agree about the king and the queen quote, got to take care of your queen. Absolutely. Okay, so, so most of the ladies in this room are looking for men who are high communicators right men i hope you are listening as i asked the women to listen last week men i hope you're listening this week you're going to have your chance to come in now one of the questions that was posed last week so you've got this this the, the person that you've written that you've said all these words about you've got you found this person and now you're the question is now, because Johnny posed a question to the men last week, so I'm going to pose the question to you this week, is, are you willing and are you ready, are you ready to support the man with his baggage? Now, I know that some people didn't like the word baggage, but you know what, guys, we're going to have to suck it up with you. Yeah, we, we, we can't get upset over words. We've got to understand what we are talking about on the big scale of things. So, um, we all have issues, things that have gone in on the past. We can be, as human beings, sometimes we are like onions. And sometimes we deal with one, we deal with an issue and we think that the issue is dealt with but further on down the line there is something underlying where you have to go and deal with that thing again and sometimes it's again again and again and it's different things within the same scenario right so it's not that you're dealing with the same thing over and over again things you know things have different facets and have a different impact on us so sometimes you have you go through stuff so this is the guy that you've met you know, he's got some of the qualities you like. Are you willing, prepared? Because 
what Johnny mentioned last week, he mentioned domestic abuse, he mentioned sexual abuse, he mentioned things that have an impact. It could be racism, it could be the fact that you, you know, you had a child um, at a, a young age and you had to deal with the family issues. It could be anything, right? So this man now has come to you and he has got some issues. Are you willing to take this man on? And what are, if any, the red flags for you? I'm gonna come back to Lorraine because Lorraine hasn't said what she's looking for in a partner. So just giving you guys time to think about that question. What are the red flags? Lorraine, come in. Hello, my darling. Hello, how are you? I'm wonderful, how are you? Oh, a little bit cold, apart from that, I'm fine. <laughs> good, 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 right. So what, are, what is it, that, what are the qualities? What is it that you're looking for in a, in a man? Um, I like a man who's an alpha male for a start. Oh. Um, yeah, he has to be an alpha man, an alpha male, because it's, uh, gosh, how can I put it? I like a man who can be a little bit assertive and tell me sometimes, when I say sometimes, because obviously it depends on the situation, tell me what we're doing or what I'm doing. Because if he's not an alpha male, I think I would take the mickey with that. Um, how can I put it? Yeah, I'm sure you will know what I mean by say by when I say alpha male. Um, I like a man who is a leader. Um, he's definitely got to have masculine energy. I just think if I was with somebody that wasn't an alpha male and a masculine energy, I would run things around him. I do. Um, he, he has to be the type of man that will say to me, Lorraine, I'm just letting you know, we're going out Saturday night. Not me saying, oh, you know, we don't ever do this or we don't do that. I like, I like to be told what to do. I just do. I don't know what it is. <laughs> uh, I had to write, write this down. What is it? Um, I like a man that's got a purpose. Yeah, he has to have some sort of passion for something. Doesn't matter if it's his job or a hobby. He's got to have a purpose and it's got, he's got to love himself and know himself enough to put himself first and maybe me second or God first and me second. But he definitely has to love himself. Yeah, that's all I can think of right now. Okay, lovely. Thank you for that. I'm just going to go to Facebook. We've got Amy who's saying, for me, it's about security, not financial security. She says, I've got me. I mean, my, my absolute. He has to see my soul because that's what I'm looking at in him. His morals need to be up there with mine. He has to have my back, my side, my front. If I fall, he's there before I know I've fallen to pick me up. Oh, this is beautiful. He has to let me do the same and trust me to do that back. He needs to be fierce. Do you know what, Amy? That could be actually a, like a poem. That this I love these, these words. Thank you. Um, and she says to you, Lorraine, you don't want a yes man. That's what she said. Uh, Simone is also saying, yeah, no yes man for me. Um, he, they want, she wants a man to take charge. Okay, so I can see there's, there's lots of people writing things in, in the thread. Communication is really big, but what are the red flags, ladies? What are the red flags? And this is a question um, that was kind of pushed by Tony. Um, and I know Tony will be coming in to the Zoom room later, um, but what so in in amongst all of those things that that we are looking for in 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 our man and like i said most again m the most common denominator here is communication most of you girl ladies want somebody who 
um, is a good communicator, um, that can plan, has purpose, because that's come up. The king and queen thing has come up as well, you know, treating self, self-respect, acceptance, um, but communication, fun has come up quite a few times as well, um, but communication has come up near enough with everybody. Um, so my question to you now is this, like I said before, we all, we all got baggage, we've all got stuff, we are grown people, we're seasoned, we have salt and we have pepper and some of us have more, we have curry, we have coriander, we have all, have all of purpose. Our purpose season, that's it. <laughs> so if that's the case, now we are of an age, that means that we've been through certain things in our lives. That means that we may have some issues that are unresolved and he may have issues that are unresolved. Johnny asked last week, are the men prepared to help us through? And he made a statement saying that we would be prepared. The women would be prepared to help the man but my question to you tonight ladies is are you willing to to help the man through his issues and if so what are the red flags what's the cut off let us know because the men want to hear I, I know i'm going to come in and say a few things after because i ain't said much so i'm just throwing it out to you ladies what are the red flags barbara come in okay um right so Yes, I would be prepared to um, work through the issues that this that my man has, because at the end of the day, when if I'm coming into a relationship, I am conscious of the fact that I, too, will have my own stuff, as they say, that I might have to deal with. And I would expect him to support me through those. So it kind of goes both ways. But saying that, um, again, relating to the whole communication, um, and this is speaking from previous experience, um, knowing that someone has issues and things that they need to deal with and wanting to support them can only go so far if that person is kind of willing to allow you to help them with that baggage. Um, uh, just an, an example of if you know that it's something that you need to talk about and the whole communication thing, but every time you try, try to address anything, you constantly get shut down and they're never willing to take that step to meet you to communicate when that is literally the only way that we can get past that barrier to address the baggage, then for me, I, it's, it's a brick wall because you can't go any further Then how do you get to address the baggage? So whilst I'm more than happy to, to try my best to address the issues with you, to help you, to support you, to maybe even help you signpost you to further help, etc. If you're not willing to make that, you know, that um, meet me halfway and communicate, uh, there, there's, no, there's nothing I can do about that. Do you know what I mean? I, I, that for me, that would be a massive red flag. Constantly, you know, every time you try to address anything, there's an excuse why you can't talk or you walk away or putting up barriers or you've got to go and do this because it, it wears you down after a while. And at this time in my life, no, I, you know, if you, you need to be able to work with me, and yeah, so that's 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 my view anyway on it. Okay, yeah, come yeah. In, Thank you, Barbara. Thank you for that. We're going to mm -hmm. come back to that, mm -hmm. Barbara. Uh, yeah, Lorraine, come in. Unmute yourself. Um, because I didn't see the whole show, I don't know if anyone said. Um, I'm going to put it out there. Firstly, um, they say opposites attract. But for me, I don't think it is. I like a man who is like, who, who's like me. I like us to have a lot of things in common, whether it's we like the same music or we like the same foods. I like someone who's like me. Same sort of interests. Yeah, same lots of things. And I'm gonna put it out there. I like a man who likes sex. I don't wanna hear, I don't want to, I can't be with a man that doesn't want it just as much as I do, because I'm not going to lie, sometimes it's been an issue, I can see Cheryl laughing. I've been with men where that's been an issue. I've got a high sex drive and he has to have a high sex drive as well. And, and sometimes I was speaking to a friend about this the other day. Sometimes I think age has a lot to do with that as well, because us women, our sex drive is different at different times in our lives. 
And um, I don't know if that could be a subject for another day because I was saying that I think men my age, their sex drive isn't as high as what mine is right now. I probably would be looking for someone in their 30s. I don't know. <laughs> but they, they, I've got a match in all areas. I like somebody who is like me. Yeah. Good. Thank you for that. And thank you for bringing that up. We're going to go, but we're going to touch on that. I'm sure the ladies are going to jump on that now. <laughs> I know I'm certainly going to jump on something a little bit later. And it's not what you're thinking. Of. <laughs> no innuendos meant. Hello. Okay. <laughs> yes, anyway. Mm. Come in, Karen. Come in. Come hither. Come on. Yeah, if you, yes, it lovely. Hello. Um, red flags. So red flags for me are people who continue to have excuses. You wanna you want to be able to achieve certain things, but it's always somebody else's fault, or it's your mother's fault, or it's your father's fault, and it's going on and on, and you're you're over 40 and you're still coming with the same excuses. So those are red flags for me. I also like to know quite quickly what their relationship is with other people. And I really take note of how they treat other people around them, whether if we're in a restaurant and they're talking to the waiter or waitress or, you know, just their the, the, the social demeanor, just how they are. And I take a lot from that. Um, I'm not one to test people. I don't deliberately go out of my way to test people or to push boundaries to see how they will react. It's just, you know, as I'm getting to know them, just, you know, how, how are they from day to day? But I think in the first place, um, I am not really attracted to, um, I would say people who tell straight away they're bad boys, I guess. I'm not really attracted to that. I like nice, I like nice guys, I like nice people. Um, so sometimes when it comes to things like that, the red flags might be a little bit harder to, to uh, discern and it might take more time to find out because there's you know quiet layers underneath. And, and I also, I don't like people who are quiet. I, I don't want to like people who are too quiet, don't really want to talk about things, internalize too much, mull things over too much. I don't really like that. Um, that's another and if, and if, Karen, um, you met somebody who had a few issues, would you mm -hmm. be willing to work through those questions, with those things with that person? Um, um, and if not, what would be the red flag in that scenario? Well, it all depends on what it is, really, because everyone's got, for want of a better term, baggage, haven't we? You know, mm. we didn't, we didn't, we're not pure, we're not perfect. Everybody's coming with something that might not be attractive or that is a stumbling block, block for them. So we have to recognize, firstly, what our, what our baggage is and... You know, we want someone to have empathy towards us, so we should be empathetic towards other people. But there are certain boundaries that there are certain, you know, things that we just I just wouldn't want to deal with, you know. And I wouldn't go with a man in the first place if he's got some of those things in place. So what? So what would that red flag be? That's that's what we're trying to ascertain. What what would that be? What would it look like? Um, someone who's too overtly disrespectful or or um aggressive I don't like it um in terms of you know um if they've got like a very disrespectful man when it comes to other women in their life so but they have to have women in their life I don't like I wouldn't like a man who has got no girlfriends um and then I don't want a man who's got too many girlfriends you know I just they need to be able to have platonic relationships with the opposite sex I think that's important as well because then they can get, you know, different views. It's not just always a man's, you know, from a man's perspective. So that's what I'd like. Um, other red flags, not specific to race, but you know, too much explosive relationships in the past. If every time you're in a relationship with someone, it breaks up because there's some big massive explosion that happened, that would be a red flag for me. I can understand going out with people and the relationship coming to an end because of X, Y, and Z, but you know, you just realize that you don't get on. 
But if it's like, you know, f- throwing things out, the, a lot of things thrown out the window, uh, this thing got stolen, somebody almost ended up in jail, all that is just too much for me. Okay, lovely. Thank you, Karen. I know Lorraine's got your, you've got your hand, um, but the other ladies are going to come in. Just say what you need to say quickly, Lorraine. Where are, yeah, yeah, come in. Oh, I was going to say um, what uh, Karen just said about how he treats other women in his life. To me, it's, if his mother is still alive, um, it's very important to me. That's a red flag, how he treats his mum. If he talks to his mum, like dirt and disrespectful disrespectfully how is he going to treat you she's right how does he treat other women um and uh, i just wanted to quickly go back to when i was saying about a man being a, an alpha man um to me I, I always say that just because a man hit his i don't know his ex-wife or his ex-girlfriend or girlfriend before that doesn't mean to say that he's going to hit me so if a man will will hit a woman who he can get away with hitting. And so, therefore, when it comes to baggage, like what um, Karen just said, to me, that doesn't matter. It's, it's how he treats me and how he treats his mum that I'm going to judge him on that. How he treats his mum. It's a big red flag if he's, if he's wrong to her. Doesn't matter how he treated his ex-girlfriend. He, he could have changed from then, since then. Okay. Thank you, Lorraine. Who's next? Who's jumping in next? Okay, Tisha, go for it. So, um, yeah, red flag. Um, for me, um, it's when they're not consistent. So I'm, I'm thinking, like, when you're getting to know someone, so, like, dating and stuff, this is where I, I yeah, this is where I'm talking. So if they're not consistent, like, they say they're going to ring you or whatever, and they keep letting you down, I've learned that's a red flag. I mean, yeah, they have excuses and stuff like that. Yes, they can be valid, but if it keeps on uh, happening, I've really got to take that as a red flag now because with experience now, I've, I've seen that. Um, no time, that's quite a big one as well. Um, so no time meaning they might have a job that they are working really late or working weekends. And yeah, you can't get to meet and things like that. that. That's a big one. I mean, I'm very busy and stuff like that, but I've learned if I really like someone, I will make the time. And it's really important to do that. So it could be through work or it could be through their children as well. So you've got to be realistic. If they've got to see their, their, um, their child every weekend or every other weekend, that's fair enough, but that doesn't, that might not lead to the kind of relationship that I, I'm, I'm looking for. So I've got to be, I've got to bear that in mind. If they haven't got t- literally time to, um, yeah, to build a relationship, that could possibly be a red flag. Um, what else? And are you willing to, if he has issues, if, say for instance, he's going through, I should really give a scenario really, um, because Johnny mentioned having, um, having a, uh, deal with with women who have gone through domestic abuse sexual abuse or those kinds of aggressive um relationships so if a man was to present himself you know to you and have those some some of those issues would you be prepared to work with him through those issues i would be as long as he is aware of those issues so uh, recently i went on a couple of dates with someone and like he just keeps on talking about his ex partners. So what, ten years? Like all, like all the time. So I did raise to him like um, maybe you're not over those situations, and he just wasn't open to the fact that looking at that. But obviously right. it was a, a trigger because he, he couldn't help himself. He just couldn't help talking about his ex situations. So yeah, if they're open and they want to learn, like yeah. I can give you some books to read or whatever, I could do some coaching sessions if you really want it. But yeah, I am open if they're, if they're aware and they know it's an issue and it's blocking them from uh, starting a, a fulfilling and long-term relationship with me. Yeah, if they're committed to, yeah, doing the work, yeah, I'll be committed as well to helping them. So yeah, that's fine. Um, yeah, another one, not being honest. Yeah, not being honest with what they want 
what they're looking for. Like I'd rather someone say they're not looking for a long-term relationship. At least I know where I stand. I, and then it's my choice if I want to persist or, or not. Yeah, honesty is massive. Um, clothes in conversation. Um, again, getting to know people. If they're not open to my views on things, like I'm I, open to their views, that, that's really hard to have a um, conversation. So that it could be trivial things, but that is a red flag. If you can't even talk and discuss things like, um, yeah, 5G and things like that, how are we gonna discuss things like um, move into another country for a, like if someone gets an amazing job or opportunity? So that's, yeah, having open conversations. Um, yeah, and, uh, and respecting people's views as well. I think that's, I suppose that's the same thing. Um, yeah, lifestyle as well. Drink, if they're like, I, I mean, I like to go out and stuff, but if they're really into drinking, partying all the time, that could be a red flag as well. Especially if you're on a health kick or whatever, and you're really trying to look after yourself and stuff like that. If they are a party animal, that could cause some conflict. Um, uh, temper as well, you've got to look at that as a, a red flag as well. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. The list is going on. I, I've literally had to write them down because I was thinking, I usually just think off the top. But temper, you've got to be mindful. Like if you're driving and they just kick off at something, or they're rude at, um, yeah, rude like in a restaurant or something, and they get upset and they can't calm down and things like that, that can potentially be a, a, a red flag. Like again, yeah. yeah. And um, uh, one more, one more. Um, they've got a lot of drama in their life as well. Um, again, yeah, a lot of self-development. You attract these things. And I, I, I'm not about drama. So if, I, if we're having a conversation and this is going wrong and this is this and this, there's something to look at. <laughs> there's something to look at there because oh. I'm not about that life. I, I like a simple life. I need a simple life. I haven't got the energy to like fight my battles and yours. Like if there's a lot of drama, if you're treating people badly or whatever, yeah, karma is, yeah, it's bad as well. But, or they love drama. Some people just love drama and, and in other people's business and no, no. Yeah, we can't be doing that. Yeah, so, yeah. I'm laughing because I read, as you said that, I saw uh, Tony Cox's comment that says, not a small list then. <laughs> no, no these, it's not a list. These are things that, red flags, potential no, red flags. Absolutely. Yeah. <laughs> absolutely, absolutely. Yeah, I've written okay. them down. Yeah, experience, is not it? I'm learning. It I'm is learning. experience. I shouldn't, I shouldn't, I am laughing because of the way that I read the comment. Um, and I could just imagine Tony saying it, and that's why I'm laughing. But, um, you have listed some things so if this person came and i'm just gonna just and then we're gonna move on and talk to the other ladies but if this person came and had an issue but they were uh full of drama and they had a bad temper the answer for me reading what and listening to what you said the answer for you held being with them would probably be no. If is that yeah. right? The thing is, I have been. I probably have been with all of them, and then I, it's only now I'm realizing that it's a red flag. So yeah, if you get on with them, I'm not saying they have all these things, but you might get on with them and get on really well, and try to put like try to have a relationship. But actually, down the line, these things are the are the things that I should have listened to, and like yeah, listened to and moved away from it. So, okay. yeah. Okay. But I, I, hear, I hear what you are saying because in terms of what you said before as to what you want, your red flags really are the opposite. Yeah? When I look at it. All right, we're going to move on. We're going to move on. Who's next? Who's next? Right, okay, Cheryl. Right, we're going to need to speed up a little bit because we had more people in the Zoom room than the men did. Uh, and I want to bring the men in shortly. So come in, Cheryl. Hi. Well, red flags. Um, 
I think having worked in domestic abuse, a man that beat up a, has beaten up a woman previously would would be a serious red flag in my book because it shows a lack of control. So that's definitely not in, in my book. Um, I I consider myself an alpha male, and I like an alpha male, but I like an alpha male who is self confident enough to allow me to be an alpha female when it to swap roles every now and again because that's what life is about. Sometimes the man is going to need some support, and I'm going to need some. So there's that. And I, um, someone who is not willing to uh, improve in their knowledge and, and, their, um, and think they know it all is a big red flag for me as well. Yeah, and, and the only reason I was laughing, laughing the rain about the, the sexual thing is, I hear you, <laughs> that's what I'm saying. And I think that it is a very important part of a relationship but um, the the other side of it is is that our, our, you know, as you get older, you have to realize that sometimes the body doesn't do what people want to do. So yeah, that's why other things need to be in place. But yeah, so yeah, that, those things are important to me. Someone who's well, willing to always to um, improve themselves, but violence and a quick temper is not something that um, I tolerate at all. Not having it. And, and I find that a lot of men who are older, when they have exes, it seems it takes men a hell of a lot more time to get over their exes. And they're more, they are more willing or, or want to talk about their exes more than they would be prepared to have it the other way around. No man wants to sit and hear about an, an ex-man 12 million times. Yet I, I think the expectation is, is that we are meant to take that uh no <laughs> to that <laughs> so yeah that's me thank you Cheryl thanks for that um I'm gonna come on to the sex thing but I'm gonna go to Ruth as, as just quick no I'll yeah. just be quick um I don't um red red flag would be someone who is uh passive aggressive condescending in their language tone um in talking to either addressing myself or anyone around me, my children, and things like that, that is a red flag for me. Um, and in wanting and willing to help um, a partner, it would ma really have to depend on what those issues were. Um, if it's someone like Shell said with a history of domestic abuse, I'm kind of, I'm, I'm out, but there are services there to help people with those types of issues. Also with cocaine as well and stuff like that. There are services out there to help you with those issues because sometimes things can have a financial impact on the family home. And just reflecting back, I had a date with one guy and after the date, he was like, oh, do you have 60 quid? And I said, no, I don't have. He goes, I really need 60 quid. So he could get himself, I don't know what it is they call it, but it was cocaine. And I just cussed him out. I couldn't believe it. Boom, done. Never saw him again because I was like, nah. So I wasn't willing to work with that. I've got children. You know, we've got to think about safeguarding and things like that. Don't want to have ba la 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 la. In, in, even though my children are older, I don't want none of that because it's not necessary. They've not used to it. I'm not going to start a pattern of at this age doing that. And in terms of like, if a partner had something like erectile dysfunction, yes, I would work with them on that. I would be willing to work with them on that if they were willing to seek their medical help and or de-stress or whatever it is that they needed to, to type, kind of fix that. But they would have to be very good with their mouth if that's the case. Yes. <laughs> yes. A compromise. Yes. You know what I mean? I can see some bad movement coming. <laughs> <laughs> ladies, ladies, ladies. <laughs> <laughs> Simple as. Listen, Grace, if, if we come to you on this last question. Come over, my darling. You're on mute. Unmute yourself, babe. All right. Okay. Um, red flag for me is a man who swears, right? I cannot, I don't like swearing whatsoever, right? I used to do it 
uh, 20 years ago and I never liked it anyway. I always think that a person who swears is lack of vocabulary anyway. They can't string a, a conversation without swearing. I don't like smoking. Right. Um, I don't like drunkards. Right, so is um, these, are, these, are, the, are these your red flags? They're my red flags. When a man, when you, when a man takes you out, he can't have two drinks. He's got to have five. And who's who? Who ends up driving? You know what I mean. Mm -hmm. So, so it's best we take a taxi. I can't. I can't. I just can't tolerate that. I can't tolerate a man when I because when you when you drink and you get drunk, you become loud. And when you become loud, you draw attention. And then when you're trying to tell him, all right, love, we're going, we're going. I ain't going nowhere. I am come out just like that. that. That's a red flag. Because I'm not, I'm not tolerate. I'm not like that. So I don't expect my man to be like that. I want a <laughs> dignified man. I want a dignified man who can have one or two drinks for the night. And he's satisfied. Okay. Yeah. And um, I uh, like Lorraine said. Um, and Cheryl um, um, said also, no, but what Lorraine said, she doesn't mind if a man had a history of whatever he had with women out there. And then obviously he's changed when he comes to you. Uh uh, go away. I don't like a man who ever lick a woman unless it was 50 years ago and then he must be 70 now. You know what I mean? So he's never hit a woman, he's probably only hit a woman once. That's 50 years ago, then I can tolerate that, right? And then I can't, um, what is the other thing I don't like of a man? Of, um, um, when I'm talking, he's talking over me. Ooh. I like a man who listens, Ooh. listens, <laughs> and I will listen because I give him, the, the, I give him that courtesy. You know, I, I would respect him. But he's got to listen, and a lot of men do not listen. They take him what they ever, and then, oh yeah, that's it. A man without friends, that's dangerous. It's like having a man who's quiet, right? A man without friends. I need to know your friends. I need, I'm, I'm talking about male friends, you know, and every man should have a girlfriend, a friend as a girl, right? Every man should have one of them. But don't chat my business to them. <laughs> right? But wow. I love, I love a man who's got good bony five friends that they've grew up with and they stuck together all the way through. Mm. They are good men because I've got brothers and my and one of my brothers got friends for 30 years and is about 30 of them, 30 of them, 30 years, and they're still only five friends okay yeah that, and that's that's red flag for me if a man man and i don't want a man to come in and uh, have no friends no one ring him up you know what i mean no one ring him up and he just sit there and watch the telly after him come on from work or whatever he do and just stay there and he asks him how oh it's all right love come on you must be you, you you must be excited for the day and if something goes wrong at work come and talk to me Communication is the key. All right, lovely. Thank you, Grace. You're welcome. Jokes. Lorraine, come in because I can see your hand up, and then I'll, I'll take it out, take it further. Go on. Oh, I just wanted to clear up quickly. I wouldn't um, ever date a man that's hit a woman. I was using that. I was using the sentence as an example of a point I was trying to get across. I just want to say that because any man that tried to hit me. I don't think he would be alive or he wouldn't have any tings left when he woke up in the morning. <laughs> what I, I was just trying to say that when you, just because you've done something to somebody else, it doesn't mean to say that you're gonna do it to me. I'm not gonna judge somebody off of previous actions. I would not date a, a, a man that beats women. Just wanted to clarify that. <laughs> okay, thank you. Right, so ladies, right? This, is, this has been very interesting because the list, the list has got, longer I think we communicate very differently from men I am going to let the men into the room shortly so men get ready I just want to I wanted to cover um 
a a point that was made and I think Lorraine brought that up and and I think the ladies would know that I would go for this comment out of all the comments that were made this evening and that is the comment in regards to sex now I don't know if the people on Facebook that are listening or you guys that are aware of this in the Zoom room, but a man's sexual peak is very early on in his life, is when he's a, like a teenager, 17, 18, 19, 20, 25. He, that's his peak, right? Whereas a woman, her peak comes in her 40s and her 50s, you know, it, it depends on, and those women in, who are on the, into the 50s, it depends on how the, the menopause, if they're going through the menopause, I'd have to mention it because it's a fact of life. Um, it depends on how that is, is affecting um, our hormones, right? So when Lorraine said, it's very important that the man has the same sex drive, I have to say for me, for me personally, it is absolutely imperative that he has a strong sex drive, imperative. It will not work for me if the sex drive is not there. If he's flopsy lopsy, it will not work for me. He will have to go and seek out Viagra or something. And like Ruth said, Get a, he have to learn to use his tongue very, very well for me to, to, to satisfy. And I'm just saying it, or, 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 you know, listen, that's why there are sex toys, hello. But if I have to depend on a sex toy to satisfy me, we're gonna have problems. I'm just saying, I'm just, I'm just, I'm just saying it as it is for me and I haven't really said anything tonight about what I want in a man but that and that is why I think last week something was said last week can I and I or it might have been the week before and I said well uh, oh I think it was the week before Shalomi had asked what if the man is small and actually Shalomi sent me something a picture of a, a man with a very small penis and I said that I, me, Yvonne Michelle, would have to say, let me see it before we, if we're waiting for, for, for sex before marriage, if we're waiting, I'm going to say to you, let me see, because that's how I stay. And that might be me being an alpha female, I don't know. But that's just because of the importance, the importance of what that means to me for being a single person now and withholding and waiting my man has to come strong in every way hello right so i can see karen i'm gonna bring the men in shortly and then i'm gonna read out desmond edwards um comment before uh we're gonna let the men in karen come in i could never understand women who get to the point of the bedroom and don't know how big their man is i just I can't understand it. I just don't understand it. How do you get to the point of the bedroom, unless it's the same night you meet him, and you you ain't done some sort of fiddling before? I just don't ever understand that. So for, for me, when I hear those stories, I'm like, what, really? I mean, how old are we now? You know, we're big women now. There's ways of, you know, finding out things before you get to that point. I just can't ever understand it. For me, I don't know when my sexual peak will be, but I hope it's not now because my man is very, very far away. So that's a big issue for me because I never thought I'd be in a relationship where the man never did it. And especially with this coronavirus business going on, I don't know when I'm going to see him again. I'm trying to hold on. I'm scratching the post like a cat. And, you know, I'm just hoping that I'm not too old and my peak don't go long before we get together. Because really and truly, it's hard times, one hard times. Mm -hmm. And I like it. I'm a very sexual person, but I'm trying to be a very good girl. Mm -hmm. Trying hard to be a very good girl. Because I would break the lockdown for some right now. I'm telling you, mm -hmm. I would break it down. Well, I, I have to say to you, Karen, because they put this new law in 
about this setting. No, no. You this can't would stay overnight. I they said, would have to break in my house to find out what I'm doing in there. I said, well, Boris, is, it's best you make that, that rule now because Boris I'm say what if I had want. a man, I'd be telling Boris, he would get a one finger salute from me because I'm doing what I want to do. Boris Not would never have made that law if he wasn't with that chick right now. I'm telling you now, Boris would never let that law because Boris mm -hmm. would Everything. If it's good enough for the scientist to have his, his mistress come in his yard all them weeks ago, don't tell people what to do. I'm sorry. You could send the police to me as, as day is day because a man would be up in here. I'd I'd send, the police, send the police to my friend. That's what I'd say, like that woman um, that was in Jamaica that time. Me and the police, they're my friends. Send them around because I'm sure they would like to see what I'm doing. Um, I will crack right. that law so, right off. <laughs> so Desmond says this. The reason why some men's sex drive is not high is because of their lifestyle. Um, he will need to have a healthy lifestyle. Um, it could always, it, maybe he could always perform good, but he might suffer from something like diabetes, high blood pressure, which affects the sex drive. And, and which is true. We know this to be true. Uh, I've had a, a good friend of mine tell me this, that, you know, he couldn't speak to his wife. He felt really, um, he, he felt that his manhood had been affected. He spoke to me about it. He was very distressed about it. Didn't know how to talk to his wife about it. And um, we, we did some therapies and I said to him, go and tell your wife, go home, tell your wife. And he did. And his wife took him straight to the doctors and realized he had diabetes because you know, it wasn't working uh, properly as he said. And um, they found that he had diabetes. He was on medication and now everything is fine. Um, you know, he, he says everything is fine. And we're still, you know, friends with him and his wife and, and they're doing really, really, really well. Oh gosh. So Simone is saying, yeah, the Pum Pum police are going to come out. Yeah. Yeah. For real. Trust me. The Pum Pum police are coming out to see, to see what we're doing. Right. Okay. So, so I really, <laughs> the, the thing is, I think it's really important that we are honest with, with the men. Um, Amy's saying stamina is needed and he needs to bring more than three kit three tricks in his box men will mirror you in the beginning ask for what you like and do what they need to do to get your attention get to a point where you catch feelings when all gets frustrating when that falls to the wayside and you're there wondering what the hell is going on when the sex slows down so does my motivation for the relationship Wow, that's a boom moment. Boom. Thank you for your honesty, Amy. Thank you so much for that because it's very true. I don't want to tell all my secrets, but I'll tell you this. I get bored very easily. So man's got to have game. It's bottom line, because I know that I have plenty game. And on that note, I am going to tell the men, men, where are you? Come hither, the room is open. Come in to the room. So, uh, Blacker Town, hello, good evening, how are you? How, right, so the conversation would be interesting. Hiya, how big are you? No, 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 no. We have to put it into context. We've been dating, we're getting to know each other. We know each other with, you know, and it's moved to that. We're looking at moving forward in the relationship. Of course, I'm gonna ask the man to show me. Why not? What you got to hide? You have shim in your eye? Because most men that I know or have come across, should I say, or friends, or friends of friends and friends, they're very, especially black men, let me just say this, they're very much, I've got my things, my things is big, my things is this, and they're very, very proud of their private parts. The majority of men that I have come across and know, I'm not saying everybody, I'm just saying, that I, and they are very, very um, proud of their bits. So, that's all I'm saying. So if that's the case, if you're proud of your bits, take it out, let me see. 
I'm not gonna do anything with it. I just wanna see. Okay, here they come. Here they come. Hey, Theo. And, and they are very, very um, proud of their bits. Wow, that's a, that's a big delay. Yes. Come on, guys. Tony, we're waiting for you. Guys, come and jump in to, don't leave. Johnny, are you here? Desmond, are you here? Come on, jump in the room. Those men who are brave enough. Theo looks like he's, hi Theo. Theo looks like he's got a whole heap to say. I know, you know, I'm, I'm enjoying the talk. Okay. I'm enjoying the talk. Okay, this is good. I, I think the talk is good. It's been very, very open. Um, <laughs> Barbara said, yes, yeah, see before you buy. Absolutely. <laughs> you know, when you, you ladies are worse than us guys, man, you lot are, you lot are very, you ladies are worse than us guys. We will, you lot are very sexual, isn't it? Yeah. <laughs> it's not a problem. It's good. It's good. Yeah. It's good. Good. Come to right. We're in our forties. Of course, we're very sexual. We're like, I know, oh, but still, <laughs> we're in our we, 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 right. we didn't even go there last week. But you like they all, you are like all up in it, man. Yeah, yeah. That's cool. That's cool. We are, we are at our peak. Yeah. We're peaking. So, that. and this is, but this could be why there's so much. There seems to be frustration in yeah. men and women coming together because. I can see from the notes I've made from last week to this week, I can see the differences mm. of the expectation of what men want and what women want at this time. And, and so, and I think, I think where we are now, as we're talking, I think this is a good thing because we can start to really unpick and help each other to move forward because there are a lot of people in this age group that are single. Yes. And they don't want to be necessarily want to be, and this is for both men and women. So the communication that, that we are using isn't effective and it's not working. And it's programs like this that will help us to, to kind of navigate ourselves around the issues that the unspoken issues that we seem to be having. So I think this is good. So I'm still waiting. So, so what, there's no other, Thea? It's just it's you okay. and us. It's okay, it's okay. I'm used to that. I work in this environment. This is cool for me. It's all right. <laughs> I work with young people, so I'm normally surrounded by lots of females, so it's fine. But, but then, you see now, Theo, for me, I look at this, and this is an issue. Yeah. This is an issue, because when you are looking for the man to step up, he's not there. That's an issue. Oh, oh, one's coming. Late, but it's better late than never. Hello, Tony. Right, so so this is the issue. So we've two men now, you know, yeah. and we've had how many men? Five, six men in yeah, the Yeah, about five, six week. last week, yeah. Yeah, and we've got two men. So this is an issue. Yeah. That's why they're single, some of them. They can't, you're not showing up. Yeah, scared. Or, or scared. Okay, so the, the word has been... What, scared. Tony? Why scared? Why are they scared? Intimidated. Some guys get intimidated. They don't think they have the vocabulary. I, I'm not too sure. They don't have the vocabulary or the confidence or whatever it may be. Yeah. Oh, there's a comment here that says they are ready to talk but not to listen. That too. Mm. That's good good evening, evening, ladies. Good evening, Tony. Are you eating your dinner? So if if how do we how do we how do we get around this how do we navigate how do we meet people that that are already because for me i'm looking on it and i'm thinking well that you you got two men in the room who are willing to talk which is great we know that there's other people on the thread that could jump on and be a part of this and they're not prepared to do that for whatever reason so for me it's like none of them are just not showing up and and then and then when we as women are like you're wasting my time they get funny 
with us because, oh, you think you're nice, or you think you're too stush, or blah, blah, blah. But actually, we're waiting on you. Mm. They're just fragile. They're fragile. Fragile, They're fragile. scared from the past, past histories, past females. Some of them don't know that we, like we spoke about last week. Um, they see this strong, independent woman and they're saying, I can't compete because financially they might not have enough money, which tends to be a lot of the issue sometimes for some guys. Financially, I'm not, I'm not all together there or I don't have my own place properly or I've got baby mama dramas, whatever it may be. So they're like, you know, this woman seems to be strong and got it all together. So they, so they get intimidated. Because you lot are talking, as I'm saying, it's quite interesting. You lot are talking very openly about everything. Mm. You know, what you expect, the size, everything, and all that. And some guys are like, oh my gosh, that's too much. And then they start running because they say, oh, maybe I don't fit. Maybe I don't match up. I can't match up to that or the expectation. So they say, you know what, let me go for someone that's easy, that's not so strong, that's not so independent or got it all together. Okay. Come in, Cheryl. Come in. Uh, the one thing that, yeah, any woman, yeah, was that anything about a man having a lot of money? I think most of us want a man to know where he's going, or, you know, or at least have a plan. Mm. Um, especially when you reach a certain age, as well. You know, you, we understand what life, that you know, divorce, separation, or all, all the rest of it that plays a great part in where we're at, but. Not woman here. Not one woman here mentioned anything about having I know. money, but it is about knowing where you're going. Um, and it's the same thing that I've said before: is is that men seem to deal with the disappointments of their love life um, in a much harder way than women do. And and it and it may well be that because we talk to each other about those things, where I think it's very hard for you men to. To get together and cry to your mate when your heart's broken because mm. men's hearts get broken too because because there's all all the things associated with that but it, it yes i think you're very right men are very fragile but you you, you still have to step up I, I find at my age i want a man to step step to me i don't necessarily want to be chasing a man at my age i want someone to step up to me and show me that they're in and that, that they're worthy and worthy is not about having money it's about having a plan about talking about being open all those things so i just wanted to interject with that okay no can i comment on that go on go on Tony. okay so uh, i'm gonna uh, disagree with you cheryl about men moving on because if if it's about men moving on then how come men are the ones who've got three, four, five, six failed marriages. Women, you get married once, and then if it don't work, that's it, I'm done. Never getting married again. Now that's, again, I, I, wanna, I wanna say this up front. I make a lot of generalizations. I was about to say that, that was yeah? a big generalization. Yeah. It is a big generalization. Generally, women marry once, yeah? If you go do your research, you will see women marry once generally. They don't get married two, three, four times. Yeah, me personally, I've been married twice already. I'm looking for number three. Yeah, it's, it, it, so men get over this. We get over um, disappointments in relationships. Yeah, women, they harbor like, oh, the last man that did me, he did me wrong. That's it with men, I'm never getting, and then your next thing is like, you know, 10 years, 20 years down, you're still not with a man. And look at Shalomi. No, yeah. hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. Was it not Shalomi? Who, who was, so, someone you hasn't had a man in like 10 years. That was somebody else that was meant, somebody else that was on the call last week. It wasn't Shalomi. Shalomi okay. wasn't here last week. Somebody on the call last week said that I haven't had a man in 10 years. And I'm like, what, yeah, 10 years? Because I don't know a man who goes two years without a woman. Okay. Um, Lorraine, you're going to come in, but I'm just going to respond to what Tony said. Um, in regards to that comment that was made last week, the lady who said that she hadn't had a man for, uh, for the 10 years, it was by choice. 
because she's looking for something specific. Doesn't mean to say she hasn't been out on a date, but she hasn't had that sexual contact for 10 years because she didn't, hasn't found a man worthy of it. And so, and I understand that. I understand that because we have, women and men have different values when it comes to sex. And we have to remember that men project and women receive. And sometimes we, we don't want to receive from any and any tagalang man who's just saying, yeah, the words that we he thinks that we want to hear. So a woman will hold back from having sex. Uh, she might date, but she might not have sex. So, and I, I, I do think there are women out there who marry um, just as much as men, but we have to remember that there are more women in the world so statistically it's going to be less for a woman anyway it would the, the the statistics will always come out less for the women because there's more of us lorraine come in for me right i'm going to generalize on the back of what tony just said i'm just going to generalize us as women we are more to committed um when it comes to relationships than men are for example if I, in my 20s, had a crush on George Clooney, I can probably guarantee that most women, if they had a crush on George Clooney in their 20s, still think George Clooney's fit today. If a man liked Jennifer Aniston in his 20s, I can guarantee you, as soon as Angelina Jolie came along, or Tony Braxton came along, he no longer fancied Jennifer Aniston, he switched. And, and to just, to kind of like generalize it, prove my point. When, if you go and sit in a church today, if you go and sit in the congregation, you'll find that there's more women sitting there than there are men. And that is because that woman has committed her life to God and, she, and she's committed now. Men, they get fed up, they get bored and they move on to something else. That's my opinion. That's why Tony's been married or whoever he was talking about two, three, four, five, six times, and I've not been married once, because I, I, I mean, well, if I was married, it would be only the once, because I, if I'm in, I'm all in, and nothing is going to sway my mind, I'm going to work oh, hard and try my hardest, not just going to quit, because you've, if, if we're, in, if we're not get, getting on anymore, then there's definitely a communication problem. And that's why I always think it's important sometimes that you don't always speak to people outside of the relationship. You need to speak to your partner first before you take it to your friends. But you've just made my point for me. You've just made my point. Which bit? One, one man and one man only gets a, a, a shot at Lorraine. If one man doesn't do what Lorraine wants, all men are finished. So then why have I only had, why have I had more than one relationship? But you've only, you've never been married. So you just said to me that yeah, one okay. man is going to get a shot at marriage and that will be it. If he no, doesn't satisfy, if I was married to him, I would be committed is what I said. Yeah. Well, and if he doesn't I'm work, we're all the best women in the world, we're work always, at it. so I've been married twice and both times I've been committed, doesn't mean to say it's going to guarantee for it to work. My longest, my, my longest relationship is 16 years with okay, two children. Okay, mine was 13. So my longest I'm, relationship was 13 so, years. So, so therefore, I'm, a, I, I'm more committed than you are because I've had 16 years with two kids. Mm -hmm. But I'm not going to, it's not a trade-off that I'm more committed than you're committed. But what I'm saying is, you, you've just said, I will give, when I find the man of my dreams, he will be the one to put my no, name on the finger. No, I didn't say when I found the man of my dreams. I already found the man of my dreams. Okay, so if you found the man of your dreams and you put he put the ring on, or he he, he refuses to put the kit the ring on, what's the problem? He passed away about two weeks before he was going to put the ring on. Okay, so I I'm sorry to hear that, but <laughs> okay. since then, are we are we no longer looking for the man the next man of our dreams? I, I don't know what I'm looking for 100%, but I do believe that the, the man of my dreams is an, another, I don't believe you only love once, definitely yeah. not. That's right, that's my point. And you, 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 I understand what you're saying, and I'm not disagreeing with you, Lorraine. You know, men are very fickle. We, 
we could be in and out of relationships dime a dozen, yeah? Especially in our younger years, yeah? It's, it's almost like gel of the week. And I can I tell you for a- I think it's still like that. I mean, you said yourself a few weeks ago that yeah. when, when your partner hit the menopause, I, I can't remember exactly what you said, but you didn't understand that and the relationship fell apart. Yeah. So, so and, and that's not, that it, it wasn't like that. This it is was more postnatal, current, more current. postnatal depression, yeah. Or postnatal depression, yeah. You didn't work at, you didn't work with, with her to find out how you could help her. You left. No, what happened was she divorced me without me know without me even knowing. I just turned up one day, there was a letter saying, I want to divorce you. I had no idea it was coming. But oh, okay. I could have done things better, Lorraine. I'm not gonna say that I'm I'm the perfect man. I could have done things mm -hmm. better. I was 30 at the time when I married her. Yeah. Yeah. 33 when I divorced her. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Now I wish I had done some things differently, but those things are only come with experience. Yeah. Okay. So no man is 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 the perfect man, because mm -hmm. you might think you met the perfect man at the age of twenty. Oh, you don't need to tell me 30, that. Remember what I said last week about the half a foot man. Mm -hmm. You don't need to tell me there's no perfect man. Remember, exactly. I'm looking for half a foot. Right. <laughs> so, so yes, we fell apart you know, at, at some point. And I know I could have made, I could have done things differently. And those things I wish I had done differently, but mm -hmm. I moved on and then I found someone else and she was an even better match for me. Because guess what? We managed to stay together 16 fabulous year and have two wonderful children. And unfortunately, something else happened 16 years after I met that, what I thought was the perfect woman. And another thing happened. And again, we both changed. We had both gone slightly separately in, in terms of our wants and our desires, but it just meant we were two different people. Mm -hmm. And yes, I did work on it. I tried my utmost because to me, my family unit was settled. I had the perfect house, the car, the, the, the job, the children, I had it all. And I worked, I, I begged for that to work out, but it didn't work out. But you know what? I moved on, yeah? And I've moved on to the point now where I'm ready to accept another woman into my life. So I'm on the dating scene. I'm looking for that next compatible woman, yeah? But it doesn't mean to say that, you know, all women are gonna just have one relationship and that'll be it. But men, we do move on. We find it easier. We're not, we're not, listen, I listened to you ladies for an hour and a half this, since, this, since this started. And the amount of things, your list must be so exhausted, Yvonne. It must be long as anything. No, it's hold on a minute. Last week you no, hang on. No, 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 no. Yeah. The list isn't what every single one of us, we all want the same thing. The list is each person listed a few things. Same yeah. as you did last week. So last week your yeah. list exhausted us as well, thank you very much. Yeah, there is a lot of commonality. Yeah. In, in what was said between this week and last week. The men were very much saying from their perspective, but the, 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 thing, the, the thing that I saw last week, and you can go back and watch this, is last week, the men were more into blaming the women. Oh, they want this, oh, they want that, oh, they, they, oh, they, 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 rather than focusing on what you want. It was very much throwing it out, throwing it out, the women this, the women that, the women the other. This week, the women have said, and, and there was a few things that you said last week, which was common amongst you all. And like this, there was most the common thing that I found in, in this week is that all of the women said communication was the most important thing. And last week, you guys were saying, you don't wanna communicate. You just wanna come home. You don't wanna hear nothing. You just wanna chill. You, you want peace. 
yeah, come in, Theo. Come in. So this is this is this is this is why now we're having these conversations because we can see clearly that there's some disparity here. Yeah, and we can work on some stuff. Theo, come in. So when we say we want peace when we come in, sometimes it's just to unwind and just get rid of the day so we can then get into the family lifestyle, to the family. So sometimes like give us that five, 10 minutes just to like, whew, we're at home. So we can, you know, de-stress because we don't want to bring work home. Well, I don't want to bring work home, especially if I'm working with a vulnerable young person or something. I don't want to bring that home and then start mumbling on about that. Now it's time to just like give us five, 10 minutes, then we can get into whatever needs to get into. And that's what most men want when we come home. Just give us, just give us a little space, and that's it. So it's not that we don't want to communicate, but it's not communicate straight away. It's right. Not, or, or we don't want to communicate all the time. It's not like all the time we want to talk. Sometimes we just want to chill. You know, there's a thing sometimes a lady goes, what are you thinking about? And a man says, nothing. We are thinking about nothing. <laughs> We're sitting there watching the television, and we're just like watching whatever it is, and we're just focusing on the program. We're not really thinking about something. So it's when we say nothing, we actually mean nothing. So there's a um, I don't know, there's a study done by a couple, and it says a woman's like a brain doesn't really switch off, she's always thinking about different, different, different things. And a man has an empty drawer where we just actually have nothing, we just literally just zoned out, not focusing on anything. And that's where a lot of the disparity comes from because we have that. We're not thinking about anything at that time. So a lot of issues arise because we're not always thinking, or this needs to be done, that needs to be done, or whatever it may be. Yeah, we, and, and I'll back that up, Theo, by saying that there are times when a man just does zone out. And, it, and, and, and I've mentioned this in a chat group. You know, we are creatures of escapism. We like to, you know, sometimes go down the pub and have a couple of drinks. I'm not an alcoholic. I don't even drink too strong. You know, I might have one, two drinks, and that'll be my lot. Um, but, you know, it is nice to go with the lads and go have a drink. Or I definitely like to go see sport. I like to go and watch football. I like to go, you know, I will travel around the world for boxing because that's why my tag is Tony, a.k.a. the Pugilist Boy, because boxing is my sport. I will go and watch boxing anywhere, anytime. That's my pleasure. That's my drug. You know, when you were talking earlier about, well, I don't like a man who's, got, who's, who's into drugs. Well, I don't take drugs. But I do love boxing and I know a lot of women do like boxing but some women will see that and go nah he's not for me because guess what the boxing thing's too much in his game in his game he wants to go around the world watching boxing now the woman that comes into my life will be like okay either I let him go and watch his boxing or I go with him because I like boxing as well and funny enough my last wife first 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 thing that we went we went to see football together and then we went around the world watching boxing because she loved the whole atmosphere, the excitement of the two protagonists going into the ring and beating six bells out of each other. And she appreciated that I, I was a, a boxing expert. Come okay. in, Lorraine, I know you want to say you. something. <laughs> yeah, come in, Barbara. Um, Hi, um, okay, so this is going back just a little bit. Um, to, to something that Tony said in regards to um, women um, harboring, you know, you know, they, they can't move on because they, they harbor, they harbor. Now, for me, I'm, I'm going to talk mostly about my experience because obviously that's, the, you know, where I'm strongest in. Um, it's not that we harbor. I say for myself, it's due to past relationships where you have been hurt, you are more guarded. And as you get older, there's certain things that you don't want to experience again. So you don't want to jump so quickly into the next thing. So I, I would just just be a little bit mindful about that word harboring. It's not about harboring. It is just literally that we're just a little bit more guarding. We're just being a little bit more cautious before then moving on. Like men can just move on and move on and move on. Yeah. Women, you know, it, it's, it's a little bit more difficult, you know, because we, we wear our hearts on our sleeve, to be fair. And okay that's that's you know for me that's what i i've had to deal with in the past so i'm very guarded and i'm, I'm not going to just jump in because i don't want that bad experience again so i'm going to be careful this time so yeah that was mm. it really nothing no long thing 
<laughs> and, 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 and I, again, I just want to address that because I think I kind of wanted to address that in, in the chat previously, um, was the issue of men who have been scorned. And I think you may have made comment about it at the time because I'm in a chat group every Wednesday with a bunch of men. You, you know this, Yvonne, um, David uh, Mullins, father, fa father, father to father, yeah? That group gets between 40 and 50 guys, black men in a room together talking, yeah? And a lot of the men in that room have been scorned. And let me give you the classic example of a black man scorned. He has a child with a woman. And this is, again, I'm gonna generalize, yeah? So women, please don't jump all over me the minute I say this, but listen to what I've got to say. Some of the men that I know are like me. I've met a woman, had a child, had two children, had three children, whatever it is. And as soon as it falls apart, the woman takes the system, uses the system to take the man out of the children's life. Unfortunately, and don't tell me I'm lying, the system is skewed that as soon as a man has any issue with in a relationship, the woman gets control of the children. And the man then has to fight for his right to see his children. Let me give you the classic example. The reason my last marriage failed was my, my wife of 16 years decided that, you know what, I want to be a young woman again. So I'm going to start taking cocaine. So then we ended up battling, battling to and fro, battling to and fro. And then I called the police. I called the police on her. Yeah. This woman is a little bit deluded because she's on drugs. Yeah. The police come. Two children in the house. Dear sir, can you leave the house? But hang on a second, I called the police. Yeah, but you, you're, and obviously I'm a little bit agitated. So guess what they say? You're great, you're aggressive. So can you leave the house? But I rang the police. The woman hit me. I rang the police to say, don't hit me. She's hitting me and she's a little bit on the, on the juice. And they come and they say, you get out of the house. Ra ra ra. Couple of weeks later, months later, what's, guess what's, what's happening? The authorities are saying, you can't go back in the house because guess why? She has the right to have the house and the children, which I provided and she's the one on the drugs, yeah? I go to the police station, lodge a formal complaint and they tell me, Give, go around the houses, da, 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 and guess who's feeling aggrieved now? And that is a common occurrence for some men. Yeah, again, I'm generalizing. I'm not saying, I'm not putting all women in the same basket, but I am in a group with a lot of men who have been scorned by a woman and have been treated badly because the woman uses the system to exclude the man from the family, it house and the children primarily. At the end of the day, if me and you don't get on, I don't give two hoots. My children are my children. Nothing should come between them and me, yeah? And that's when a man can be scorned. And I know women can be scorned. But trust me, I've been scorned and I've moved on. Now, when the woman gets scorned, that can be it. Right. So I'm just going to come in there and say that it's, it's, that's twofold. Because of the work that I do, that is twofold. I, in my own family, in my own family, my nephew, is constantly fighting to see his daughter constantly and he's a good dad so and not because he's my nephew it's just that I happen to know him right but it's twofold because and the reason why I'm going to say this is because the aggrievedness the bitterness comes from men and the bitterness comes from women too because I can hear even when you're talking I can hear the pain that you went through so from a perspective of being a partner hearing that it's like okay so this is something that's still quite raw okay so this is why I'm saying it's it works both ways women are scorned Women scorn men, men scorn women. But what we have to do is that we have to take responsibility for the actions that we've part, had in the part of it, whether we are to blame or not, we have to forgive ourselves for the issues that were around it. And then we have to move on and not take that issue of, of women doing that, because we know that women do that. And we also know that men don't look after their kids. 
Do you know what I mean? We we know it's, it swings and roundabouts. It happens on both sides. So we've we've got to get to a place now where we're not bringing that baggage into the next relationship. Because as somebody that I don't have baby father drama, I don't have that. Yeah. You know? So for me now, that if somebody coming in with that and having that 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 pain, I would have to assess that and think, well. Am I willing, the same question that Johnny posed last week, are you willing to go there with that guy because of that? Because I don't have that drama, I don't have that issue, I don't have that pain. And it would be me then looking at, well, I've got to have to go back in time to help my guy to come forward. And that might not happen because baby mother drama and baby father drama is real drama. And you don't have control over that. Do you see what I'm saying? So we have to be mindful how we are, how we project this pain. And this is one of the issues that we are seeing now in our relationships. This is one of the things. Um, there's, there's been lots of comments, um, lots and lots of comments. Um, there was one here from, from Teo. She says, that, and it's like we're going back a little bit. She say there are men um, also out there that have not had intercourse for years, but will not have the boldness and the courage to say it. While women are not afraid to share that they have been, they haven't been with anyone for a long, uh, a long length of time. Theo, you're nodding. Is that, do you, do you agree with that statement? No? Yeah. Men is all about ego with men. Mm -hmm. It's all about ego. You know, brash and boast and how much you've had and how much you haven't had. You get a bunch of guys in a room together and it's all about ego. We're very egotistical, you know. We need our ego to be fed. So we need to, if you haven't, if I haven't, I'm not going to say it to anybody that I haven't. Because it's, it's not deemed, you know. If you're a single man, you're supposed to have women. You're supposed to be getting the woman. You're supposed to be that guy. You know, you're going out, you're supposed to be that guy. So if a guy's married like me, you know, you live your single life through your single friends. Like, oh yeah, he's gone out, he's got this girl. You're like, yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, reliving your youth. Mm -hmm. so if a guy's not doing that, he's going to make it up, whatever it may be, to, to feed his ego. And make me feel, oh yes, you still got it. You still got the game, you still got that. And he most probably isn't doing anything. And that's what it's an ego. Most guys, it's ego. Everything to do with guys is an ego thing. It's all about our egos. It's all about making ourselves look good and feel good. And to go back to when you're saying about why guys don't approach women, and it's not a money thing. For guys, it's always a money thing. It's always a money thing with a guy. If a guy's pocket, if a guy feels like his pocket is not, is light, he's not going to go this. If he looks at a woman and says, this woman's got it all together, she's got this, she's got a house, she's got a car, and he's not really bringing anything, he's going to step back because his ego's been touched because he's thinking, I can't compete with that. But or why does it have to be a competition? It's just a man's ego. It's how men are, it's how men are wired. It's how they are. It's a, it's, it's a competitive nature. That's why if you get a bunch of guys in the room, it's, it's how can we outdo each other? You go to the gym, you see the guys who's got the bigger muscles. It's, it's just how men are wired. It's in our competitive nature. Yeah, absolutely that's, right, Fia. I'll back, I'll, back up what, I'll back that up as well because I know, listen, you know, we guys like to hang around with each other. We go out, we go to sports, sporting events, we go out for drinks, we go to clubs together. And guaranteed, there's always one guy who's not catching, you know, who's not quite in with the group. You know, he hasn't quite put everything together. He's struggling financially. You know, he hasn't had a girlfriend for a long time. And trust me, his, his ego is deflated. And you kind of, as, as your boys together, what we do as a, as, a, as a collective is we try to buoy each other up. So that young, that, that young pup who's, who's struggling, we big him up. We, we give him enough to go like, come on, come on, you're with us, yeah? So we kind of give him the boost to go, feel confident about yourself. And we can go out and we'll chat to some girl and feel confident that, you know what, if she asks you for a drink, we'll have, we got your back, we got your back. Yeah, that's how we boost each other up. Okay, so so in, in this competitiveness, where does that leave the woman? If, if, if it's about competing, where, where does that leave us? 
in terms of bonding with you and having that relationship with you and, and moving forward yeah, in, in some kind of relationship, where does that leave us? It's just working together. It's just working together. It's, it's, it's just literally working together. So I'm going to tell you, it's not about, okay, so your partner can't afford to pay the bills. I'm going to tell you my story. So I got made redundant and we got two boys. So I, I work with young people. I was working for a charity, got made redundant. I was at home with the boys. So my boys were in primary school at the time. And my wife's an assistant head at high school. So I said, okay, we're going to make a plan. And we're going to go, we're going to, I'm going to support you to become a head teacher. That's the plan. That's the mission. Yeah. So that means you can go to your meeting, stay late because to get into that top level, you have to be flexible and available. So I work part-time because my job is flexible. So I can go into schools and work four hours, whatever it may be. I became a childminder as well to support myself. But obviously my income went down from where it was to literally monthly. I'm just about supporting myself monthly. So that meant couldn't go out, didn't do this and do that. So we had to work together on that. So financially, my wife's got the big money. She's doing her thing. But it's a team effort. It's, it's working together. Four years, we did that for four years. And trust me, it was hard. Because sometimes you go out, you go to a restaurant, and the waiter comes to you to pay the bill. At that time, you don't have any money. So what my wife used to do, sometimes before we go in there, she'll give me the credit. She'll give me the card. Mm-hmm. Or so slip under the table. Mm-hmm. Now that's to make not to make me feel good, but it does because I'm able to pay, even though I'm not paying. But it makes me feel because that's what men need sometimes. Because trust me, it hurts as a man that you can't support or provide. Even though we made this pact together, it's still hard because as a man, you know, you're taught from young to provide, go out and conquer. From caveman days, the man goes out go get, bring the food and support the family. So when the roles are reversed and the man is not that, it, it knocks his ego. And what he needs from his woman then is to support that. It's a moment, it's a temporary, you're gonna be better, you can do that. It's about rubbing his back. It's not about then, oh, you're not doing this or you're not doing that, you're not doing this. It doesn't work. My wife now, find, finally, after was it four or five years, she's a head teacher. The first black head teacher in Harrow. Right. Well done. Yeah, but it was a, but it's the support. So you have to work it together. So there's going to be in a relationship. It's not going to be smooth sailing. Your man's not going to be this and not going to do that. But it's about working together and have a common goal. You get there. If you want a man to come in and he's he's this and he's got a plan and he's got this and he's got to be focused and all that. You're asking a lot. I you're think... asking a lot because you don't know what's happened before he's gotten to where he's at. He could be 45. And he might have had a plan and it brought and it fell down when he was 39, 40. And he's trying to pick himself back up and you're saying, oh, well, you're 45, you should have had everything together by now. But I think that I think that in terms of a relationship, and I don't know how the other ladies feel about this, but I think that if there is communication from the beginning, then this is this is where you find the things out and then you can make the assessment. Um, I think that, you know. I think likewise for me, you're saying, you know, we're expecting them to, to have all this thing together, but could it be possible that as much as you may think that, that men are also overthinking this process too? Uh, because last week I, I, I mentioned the fact, I said, I do what I do. I, you know, and I, when I have conversations with people, I'm not saying, oh yeah, I do this, 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 and I drive this and I live here and da, 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 da. I'm not in that at all. But there is a perception uh, of women, especially when it's a woman who is a bit of a high flyer or is out there in social media or whatever, that there's a perception that men feel that she's a certain way. And so a man, you, you mentioned about a man, um, they they have issues with money so a man might perceive it oh she's all put together she's got money she's doing all right I can't step to her but he doesn't know how much money I've got 
He doesn't but know it's, where I live. It's a, as Theo said, it's about ego. It's about the man's ego. It's literally um, a case of if, if, if you're outperforming me um, and I haven't got the game to step to you, that, that for, for many men, unfortunately, and again, it's a huge generalization, more often than not, a man's not gonna step to you because he feels intimidated by your, um, your, your exterior image. Okay, so then that would then mean that, that uh, you know, that there would be this thing, well, to, to have a man is I've got two choices. I can stay manless or I can dumb myself down just to make the man who already feels inadequate in himself feel, that in, feel adequate. As women, I, I don't, I'm not, I'm going to speak for myself, me as a woman, I ain't got time for that. I'm not here to rub down your ego. Men, you need to buck up now. This, okay, is, this so, is where I'm, where I'm at. So if that, this is, it, hold on, let me finish. If this so, is about your ego, mm. then you guys need to address yourselves mm. because your ego is killing you. Yeah. So then this is, this is where, when you look at the dating scene, this is where you end up with different levels of dating um, scenarios. So this is why you end up with, there's a group of elites who want to date elites, yeah? There's a group of uh, working class who want to work, who want to um, date working class, yeah? So if you go on like, you know, plen uh, plenty of fish, I, I kind of look at plenty of fish as being the working man classes dating, dating out. It's everything. And some of, the, some of the things that you see, you're like, really? You ain't got a chance in hell. But then you go on another app and you're like, right, all of these women look stush. Yeah? And I'm sure you must look at dating in the same way as it's like, okay, well, if I go to the pub, I'm going to get a working class man. But if I go to a high level elite um, networking event, guess what I'm likely to meet? A very elite gentleman. Mm -hmm. You see what I'm saying? I do. So we, put our, so we, we, we subliminally put ourselves into certain brackets and we say, right, okay, I want a woman who's up here, yeah? And we go out and we find, we, we put ourselves in that area, yeah? Because look at, look at, like me, I'm about black power. I'm about black power. So all the women that I know are pro black power, even if they're white. They're, they're on the black power thing. I know this week I've had loads of women who who know me for being the, the activist, yeah, working with the 100 Black Men of London, working with the Kyan Prince Foundation, working with the Afro-Caribbean Leukemia Trust. And they've come to me and said, Tony, you know about this racism thing. Can you tell me how to deal with those friends of mine who have, you know, who I have trouble with? And I'm like, well, you know what? I've been doing this since dot. Yeah, so I'm aligned with certain people, and I think that's how I met you, I I Yvonne, because I was in a group of people that basically said we're all about black empowerment. Mm -hmm. Now, if I don't want to, if I just want the, 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 the dregs of society, and I'm just like, you know what, I just want to put my put my certain somewhere, then I can go anywhere else in a different environment, and I'll find a thing and be able to, you know, because there's plenty of white women who would just. You know what? We're just one <laughs> black man. There's plenty. Yeah, you said it yourself. There's seven women to every man. So a man doesn't have to look far. Nine. Nine. Statistically, I looked it up. It's actually nine. Nine. Okay, so, yeah. so a, man does, a man doesn't have to look far. But you see what I'm saying is like literally um, we put ourselves, we, 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 got, we, we, we look at ourselves and we say, right, where am I? Where am I in the echelon of things? Yeah. We look at our age, yeah? We look at our physicality. And we say, what are we looking for? And we try and put ourselves in a group of people who we think will be similar to ourselves. Yeah. 
Well, I agree. Does anyone else, because I don't want to take over the conversation too much. Does anybody else want to come in and, and respond? Okay, I will respond. <laughs> I, I, I hear what you're saying and I agree with you to a degree, but I think it's kind of drifting off the point. I think because we were talking about um, in terms of with we're actually connected i mean i have people who who i know that there are people who are out there that kind of hover they don't ask me they don't ask me anything but they hover around and i kind of guess well maybe that's you know that they don't have the courage to ask me i don't know and there are some that will come and ask um in a in a really lapsy daisy kind of way uh, but again you know because we're I'm trying to kind of get to understand the mind of the man and if you're saying he's not approaching me because of his ego then for me that's that's a real a real issue here because like I say your ego is killing you the ego is stopping you from actually speaking to somebody because you're insecure about how you feel because she may or may not earn money more money than you that you don't know whether she does or not so all of this is playing in your head and it makes no sense it does make sense because you take let, let's talk about I mean if you go in a nightclub yeah and you're a successful woman, mm -hmm. yeah? You go in and you look around the room and you see a guy who's, who's holding a bottle of crystal in his hand. You're like, hmm, okay, he's made, a, he's made a success of himself. And I know there's a lot of fake guys that, that run around and they, you know, they're living at home with mum and, and, and they, they go out and they spend crystal money. But um, generally, you look, at, you look at a nightclub environment and you've got guys in there who you go, they're successful. They're sitting at a table with, with a bunch of guys and girls and they're having a great laugh. And you've got some guys that are just wandering around the floor aimlessly. And you're like, why aren't you at a table? Why aren't you with a bunch of people who are um, turned up, lighting the place up, yeah? Mm -hmm. So you then got to go, right, okay, so I'm in an environment where Generally, this is a good environment to find people, yeah? Am I going to be looking at the guy who's sitting in amongst a, a group of people who are successful? Or am I looking for the aimless stranger who's walking around without any direction? And we, make these, be, we, we make these... We make the these uh, me, personally, I'm going to be looking for the one who I'm attracted to physically. It doesn't... What's going on around, the crystal and all that... All that that all that for me is just that's just foolishness I ain't got time I can buy my own crystal for me it's, it's not it's and it's not to say that but it's when I go out I'm not looking at that I'm I just, don't think that's the case though Yvonne I think everybody looks at that no and the reason is if you didn't look at that yeah you 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 wouldn't be judging people and i think everybody judges people to a degree again big generalization and i know i see lorraine's jumping ready to jump in but generally i think people do make some general assumptions so if you look at a guy and he's not wearing um the right attire he could be in a very good place right but his attire doesn't quite match up you make a judgment yeah and sometimes uh, the way I equate this is, if you look at Jay-Z at the start of his career, he used to wear bling everywhere. Mm -hmm. Now that he's a multi, now that he's a billionaire, he wears no jewelry. Now guess which of those two guys was attracting Gala Plenty? Is the guy with the jewelry, the flashy guy. I think when you're younger, that may apply, but I think, because you've got to remember that you're talking to grown ass women here, and for me, you know, back in the day, back back in the day, I used to have sovereigns and all the chains and all of this stuff. And that was, yeah, 
back then that was like 25 30 years ago but now that that's not something that that swings my it's not something i'm interested in i'm interested in the heart and the spirit of a man so i want to have a conversation with you so you could we could be out and you could be dressed like theo in a cap and a t-shirt blah blah come over and talk to me and i will talk to you i'm not going to scorn you because you're not dressed in a suit I'm going to talk to you because I'm interested in in how you approach me. And it's all about the approach. So if you approach me like a whimsical man, then probably I would just say, I'll speak to you later, ciao. But if you come up like an alpha male and say, hello, good evening, blah, blah, blah. And you've got some kind of conversation, which I would say is game, yeah? then I'm going to talk to you all evening. You engross me in conversation because that's the type of woman I am. But I think that there is a misjudgment. I think that there is some judgments going on here that you, we look at people and perceive them to be something that they're not. I, and, I re, and I think that this is what's going on between us as the older ones. And this is why we're not finding the relationships that we want to be in. Theo, I, I, actually, Lorraine's hands up, then Theo come in. Lorraine, come in. Yeah, I just wanted to say something on what Tony just said. Um, we do all have a, a, a slight judgment, but it doesn't mean to say that your judgment is right. Because for me, I met a guy once who tried to chat to me and I wasn't interested because he had lots of cars, lots of houses, all the bling he was very flashy and I was like nah that's not for me and I'm and I'm a woman that lives in a council flat so just because he had money and dressed a certain way and hung out with certain people didn't mean to say that that was going to draw me in since then we formed a friendship and I've learned that he's actually a really nice guy so if I was to pursue him now myself it would be on his personality because I don't like all the all the bling bling that comes along with it, which is why we're not in a relationship, one of the reasons. So not not all not everybody goes somewhere and goes for the person that's sitting there with the bling bling or the crystal or whatever. Because for me, that's not for me. That's what I wanted to say. So I was kind of in agreement with what you just said, Yvonne. They are jumping. I wanted to say is the bling bling and that is that that gives the guy the ego that gives him the confidence because he's strapped like that. The guys that tend to have the game that you're not talking about, the confidence, a lot of them tend to be gallus. So they don't really care if they get this, this or not, because their game is just to get the woman in bed anyway. So they'll have that confidence to go around. What I will say to some women is that when a guy approaches you, give him the chance. Because I've even seen in the group, some women talking about shoes. I remember when I was younger, a woman says, the first thing I look at when a man's coming to me is his shoes. If his shoes ain't, if his shoes ain't right, forget that. Mm -hmm. Yeah, he's already, he's, already, he's already lost. And guys have experienced that. So as guys go out, they try to make sure they, that's why we have the bling and the crystal and all that, because they've been told oh your shoes wasn't right your this wasn't right so what happens is it knocks you a few times so you next time you go out you put on all those things to say okay well i've got it all together i've got on the flashy shoes i've got on this i've got the chain i've got that now what you say now you're saying is oh you're too flash now so the guy's like well i can't win because when i had the when i had the brought down shoes you didn't want to give me time because you're looking at my shoes and saying my shoes are dusty now I've got the nice shoes. They say me, I'm too flash. So some guys will be like, you know what? Forget it. I'm going to go for the easy girl. That's just like, don't give a damn. That wants the crystal and that wants the drink and that wants the flashy cars and all that stuff because you're being picky now. First, I wasn't flash enough. Now I'm too flash. So it's like, you know what? Forget it. And that's, and that's where the breakdown is. So if a guy steps to you, even if his shoes is dusty, talk to him. Because you don't know what he's like. As you said, you spoke to the flashy guy, Lorraine, and you realize he's a nice guy. Mm -hmm. But if you didn't speak to me, you would never have known that. So speak to them. You don't know what's behind it, what's the facade and the ego. And it's because most of the time it's just a front. Just like some women put on a front, like they're this and they're that. It's just a front. 
And it's a game. So everybody's playing a game. Everybody's doing something. It's a game. So if a guy approaches you and his, his shirt is, you know, a bit creased up or something, still talk to him. Give him, give him the two minutes because you don't know who he is, what's he, what's he about, and find out what's going on there. Yeah, his, his eye might have just broke. But because you haven't given him that, because you haven't given him that time, you don't know his hands broke. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so we got, we got, hold on, we got, Barb, Barbara's had her hands up for a while, then we'll come back to the rain. Okay. Um, what I was going to say is, I, I actually hear, what, I do hear what you're saying, guys, I do hear what you're saying. Because um, sometimes I, and I've seen it myself, that with some women do send out different messages one minute they want this particular man like you're saying they want the flashy and then you you change to suit that and then they don't want that i have seen that so i'm going to agree with you with some women can be that way however speaking for myself i would give someone the time of day whether they're dressed in a tracksuit or whatever and the reason being depending on where i am or what i'm doing or what mood i'm in sometimes i rock i rock my track my adidas tracksuit my cat and I look different and I would not want someone to judge me based on the way I'm dressed but I would expect someone to kind of kind of judge how they can approach me by the kind of aura that I'm giving off and that's what I go for I look on the it's again like what Yvonne said about the approach if you step to me in the correct way I don't care how you're dressed to be fair because I'm interested in the person I want to get to know you the person behind the clothes so if I, I, I address people how I would like to be addressed. That, that was it, that was it. <laughs> okay, lovely. There was Lorraine, Grace and then Theo. I wanted to say that um, men do that too, by the way though, judge a, women, judge a woman by on her appearance or whatever, because as everybody knows in here, I pole dance and my Instagram is mainly all my, my pole dancing journey. And I'm telling you that men look at me and think, yeah, she's a, she sleeps around, she's a hoe, she must dance in a nightclub. And my pole journey is nothing to do with that. I do it because it's my passion. I don't do it to get paid. I've never worked in a club, but men will just automatically assume that I do that for their entertainment. So, so it works. It works both ways. They they look at a woman, see it, see what they're doing, what they're out and about, and make a judgment on that straight away. Two. Grace, unmute yourself, babe. Um, a question to um, Theo. Theo, you're in a club and you see a girl and she has on her shoes and her toe is over the front of her shoes and her little toe is catch in between the, 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 the making of the shoe, the style of the shoes. You look down, I know men look women, women up and down, right? Before they approach her. And, and especially if she has a nice, Cockabucker shape, right? You guys will go for that kind of woman than a woman who's just just a barrel, yeah? That's no shape. Okay, so the woman have the 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 toe hanging over the shoes. Are you judging that? Would you go and talk to that woman, or if that woman came and approached you and say, "Hi, you right?" And you saw her shoes already by the time you were stuck when you were standing up there, right? Tell me you wouldn't judge her from her tour hanging from her shoes. Would you say something to her? All right. I was gonna put this before, I was, I was gonna say this before. If I was a young man, if I was younger, her toe hanging out her shoe don't mean nothing to me. If her shape is what I'm looking at, then I'm going for it. As I've gotten older and I'm looking for a relationship, I'm looking for someone, then that might have a problem. But if I was a young man, when I was young, I didn't care if your shoes hang over the side or this and that. I'm looking at your physique because I'm not looking for a relationship. I'm not looking, if I'm, look, I'm not looking for a relationship. I'm just looking for, as, as Tony says, to put my thing somewhere. So yeah, it doesn't matter. 
someone. But you guys <laughs> say that if a woman, if a man dressing his bling bling, would we give him a chance of talking because he thinks he's uh, is all that, right? Or if a man have a mash up shoes, and he came and approach, um, say me for instance, I can mm. speak for myself anyway, and. Um, would I give him a, a time of day, whether I'm young or old, uh, or mature, because I'm like a fine wine. And um, if I was younger, and I'm, I'm telling you, if I was younger and I saw a guy come with some mash-up shoes and his shoes dirty, that means he's not taking care of his appearance. Yeah, that's my view, right? He's not taking care of the his appearance, then he expected to go and talk to a woman with his shoes mash up like that. But it depends on his circumstances. He might not have the money to buy a better pair of shoes. That might be his best pair of shoes he's got. Then uh, if, and, if it's your best pair of shoes, wouldn't you clean it? Even if it turn up, right? The nose turn up, right? <laughs> on the shoes, right? And the back of the the back of the shoes is is, right. is going a slant. Mm. But you clean your shoes. If you clean right. your shoes, that don't take long to clean a shoe. As I said, when the, so a lot of the times when the guy's young, if he's not looking for a relationship, it doesn't matter what the woman's dressed in, clothes in, whatever. That's irre that's irrelevant to the guy. Yeah. He and, just and wants can... something to he just wants something to sleep with at night. Where the woman's oh, looking that... at the man, even at a young age, as a future partner, as a relationship. So you're you're you're, still, you're, you're sizing them up for a long-term relationship. So uh, that's what you're doing. So when a guy approaches you, you're looking at his shoes and saying, well, he's not taking care of his this, so how is he going to take care of me? And all these other bits and pieces behind it. You know, is he going to be a good dad? Is he going to do all these kind of things? The guy's just looking at the woman saying, I just want to get some. As the yeah. guy gets older, he, he thinks differently because he's saying, you know, I want to settle down. I'm looking for you know, a woman, a good woman and stuff like that. And then he starts taking notice of what she's wearing, how she dresses, how she presents herself, how she talks, and all that starts to play into their mind. But when you're young, as you said, Yvonne, a man's at his sexual peak between 16 and 25. So if you approach a man at 22, 23, do you think he cares what the woman looks like? He's at his sexual peak. He just wants to get some. And I tell you what supports that, Theo, is nowadays when I look at some of these young ladies, yeah, they seem to all want to walk out in street in their slippers, them little fluffy slippers with the feathers all. I'm like, you really came out of your house. You got all the makeup all over, and then I look at your foot, and you got the slippers on. And tell me, women, am I wrong? How many women go out of the house in them little slippers things? And I'm not like, me, oh, not right. ever, not you ever. See, this is the thing. We are grown. We are not little girls. <laughs> no, he's not. Like this, but this is the thing. Are you talking These about little girls, women? them? These little we're girls. Talking are about picnic. Why are we talking about picnic here? <laughs> but the thing is, these little girls are attracting men wearing slippers. Yeah, Back but they're the girls, they're not women. Yeah, yeah. That's the one night fling, weekend, summer fling, long term. <laughs> and that's what and that's what we're saying. When you're young, to a, to a young man, it doesn't mean it doesn't matter what she looks like, how she's dressed, it doesn't matter. As you get older, you take those things into consideration. I don't know if it doesn't matter. Oh, Karen, you've muted yourself. I know my finger's a bit tricky. Anyway, I think I think that's not true because I I swear that like young boys especially, and, and I'm not even no, sure. If, no, 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 no. They want to go out with the girl that their friends are attracted to. Yeah. <laughs> they don't want to pick up any old thing just to stick it. If they mm. did, you see that minger that you just picked up. The mates are in it. So Let this evil thing is massive. Unless you're doing it on the corner. Can I say something to you? Can I say something to you? I don't know coming after. Come on. All right. It's about if the mates think the girl. Can I explain something to you? Can I say something? It's hot. That that minger, yeah, as you say, is the guy, is the girl that the guy's sleeping with. <laughs> but his is mates don't know. But, but, don't his, mates, his mates might not know. But he His knows. Don't know. <laughs> yeah. We're talking about that first attraction, picking up in a club business, right? Nine times out of ten, the girl is not gonna pick up something that his mates doesn't think. No, is no, 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 no. 
No, in the club, you pick up whatever. If that's why you got this terminology, strobe like honey and all this kind of stuff. That's where it came from. You go in the club, you see something, and when you take it in the light, you're like, oh my gosh, what have I done? Yeah, yeah that's in the back light. In... When the light come on and the mates can see what she's Yeah, doing. then it's like, oh it my gosh, matter. it's too it late. It don't matter, because back in the day, yeah, remember this, and of, and of all of you like, are of an age, remember when you used to go Shabim, yeah? You couldn't come out the club if you didn't have a thing on your arm, yeah? Good, bad, ugly, whatever it was, you needed to <laughs> take some home that have... night. No, I was a thing on their arm. Never. You don't grab up the wall. You needed something to take home. That's right. That's right. Okay. That's Let right. me just say this. Back in the day, for me, and we can we can only judge it by our own standards, yeah? And going raving in clubs like Oasis, Pier One, Night Moves, and all of those kind of clubs, yeah? I could dance with as many men as I wanted to. You ain't coming home with me. That's right. You, you're just not coming home. You ain't what? coming your home. Your friend was. No. Your friend was. Your friend going to come off the wall on your head. You ain't coming home. <laughs> this your friend was. Now, I'm not going to come home. I guarantee in a group, you used to go out with about six girls, right? <laughs> yeah, yeah. Two to four, maybe. Just go One of them. <laughs> One of them. One of them. One one I tell you why, and, and it's the same one, one every week. <laughs> it doesn't matter. <laughs> Not one of them should I tell you why? Because they wouldn't be coming going home. They won't get home. I'm the driver. I ain't carrying nobody in my car that I don't know. No strange man. No. The man's taking her home. It's about having standards, guys. <laughs> no, I'm not saying that one night stands don't happen. I'm not saying that. But what I'm saying is in reflection and going back, that's not, raving was raving. Yeah, you meet people, yeah. you have conversation. I remember having conversation from the phone box before mobile phones was even a thing. The <laughs> Put coins in the, the box. box. I'd give the number, <laughs> I'd hear the phone ring, I'd run down the stairs, go. And it's conversation. And as I think about it, most of the time has been conversation. And then sometimes I have to admit Back, and I'm talking back, 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 back in the day. So don't judge me, right? So I have to admit that I would meet, uh, talk, and maybe go out and maybe after the do, I might get a bit bored and I'll be like, bye. Mm. Because there's no, level. the conversation is not going anywhere. Mm. So as an older person, as somebody that's wiser, I'm not rushing it. These are the reasons why I'm not rushing it. Unless I'm looking at you as, can I say what's the time? Can, uh, unless I'm looking at you as a fuck buddy, right? And I'm just keeping it real now. I'm not going down that road with you at all until I, we need to talk and talk and talk and talk because everybody puts on their best facade in the beginning. Yeah. Who they want you to... I don't want to know that person. I want to know the real person. So I'm making you wait for that thing. And then I know whether or not it can carry on. But back in the day, if I was quick to do them things, I'd be quick in and quick out because you're boring. And I need more stimulation in every capacity. Over to you, Theo. No, I was going to say, as we get older, it's about conversating. Mm -hmm. So is. if a guy's talking to you, conversate. Put your list to the side and get to know the guy. Put your, just put your list to the side, what your wants and your needs, and get to know them because your list sometimes blocks, your list, some, your list sometimes blocks blocks your thing. Of course, you have your red flag. So if he does certain things or says certain things, you say, you know what, that's a red flag. But just get to know somebody. Take time to get to know somebody. You don't have to rush into anything. There's no rush for the relationship, especially if you're looking to spend a long period of time with somebody. There's no rush for anything because you're looking to spend your lifetime with somebody. So get to know somebody. But sometimes we're so quick to tick a list, tick a box, because, oh, he's got to have this. Oh, he's not doing this. He's not doing that. Well, you know what? He's not the man for me. Let's get to know somebody. So if someone's talking to you, talk to them. Find I want to get to know you, brother. I want to yeah. get to know Theo. Theo's, Theo's got so much knowledge, yeah? He's the kind of guy that I like to align myself with. And this is how I look at age and experience allows me to be able to go, you know what? 
just listening to a man speak eloquently with with intelligence i'm like yeah that's a man i would like to align myself with because if i wanted to have a conversation outside of the group i just say you know what any man anyone that i want to have a chat with is feel because feels just a rounded guy he's on point with everything he says i'm like yeah i'm so in agreement with what he says and it's not like he just wants to be controversial but he's just honest and real and that's what i think a lot of the women they 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 they're, they're shying away from a guy because sometimes that honesty and that realness is 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 too much i aspire to be like feel married and all that and 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 look he's he's got it together and i'll be honest with you if you'd have come and seen me 3 years ago i was feel i had it all but right now i'm looking to meet somebody but i'm saying like listen you do just need to have the conversation and if if and if listen if one of you wants to come and talk to me outside come and talk to me outside you, the, at the worst case scenario, you're going to go away and say, well, at least I know a little bit more about Tony. Because me and you, Yvonne, had a conversation. We've known each other for how long? And I feel like, you know what? I could talk to Yvonne about anything. I send you messages, right? Because I've kind of gone, this, this will trigger her, her thought processes. This is the sort of thing that will make her think, oh, he sent me something knowledgeable. Listen, I'm all about this. The Black history, greatest story you ever told. Yeah, so sometimes I'm like, you know what? I would just give some bit of information to just trigger a, a conversation. And that's all it is for me, just conversate. Okay, I could see a SP shaking her head. Do you wanna come in SP? Yeah, sorry. I'm going to try and do this quickly because I think the battery on my laptop is going. Um, fortunately or unfortunately, I do know Theo. So yes, I will testify to some of the stuff that you've said, Tony. I kind of wanted to basically say very, very quickly that um, I do have a tick list and I'm going to tick list because my tick list is actually important because it's the basis on, on the, I'm sorry, I have to say that I'm going no tick list because my tick list is very important to this year, me, Mick, right? Because the thing is this, yeah. Um, maybe it's because my background is actually in recruitment, but for me, questions that I'm going to do, and I do, I will interview without him even realizing. But the reason why there is importance with that is because it's supported by the standards I have. So therefore, if a particular man has a particular view when it comes to finances and money, that's important because I'm all about my life. All right, and I'm very frugal. I'm, I'm all about my money. Okay. When it comes to aspiring to certain things, see, oh, you know what I'm like already from time. So you know that I'm confident. If I'm not having it, I ain't having it. You got a jog. But my thing is, yes, I am minded, and I will hear someone out. At the same time, I couldn't care if you're a dustman. I couldn't care if you're on six pounds an hour or whatever, because it's not about where you're at. It's about where you're going to. Absolutely. Background for that. So that's fine. I can do that, and I can be open minded, because where we are today is not necessarily where we were yesterday and where we aspire to go. I'm all for that. But I am going to ask you certain questions in regards to your attitude towards sex, your attitude towards money, um, how you do spend your money. OK, that's a personal thing, but I still want to know. I do want to know what your outlook is in regards to the relationships you have with the women in your family, how you view family, because that's important to me. So all these things about tick lists. We have our tick lists because it, it basically correlates with my standards. So I don't think there's anything wrong with that. On the other chance, on the other hand, when you said about people a chance, Theo, you're as eloquent a species I've got one, right? Because you are, you're, you're, you know, you're a talker. And I've known you since I was a teenager, but my thing is, is that everybody is able to articulate themselves. And yes, there is ego covering a lot of stuff. But if people think that I have the patience to necessarily hear people out while they sprat me or whatever the word is at the moment, because I'm old school. If you really think that I am going to lower my standards to actually give you a chance when I was actually brought up in a household which had four girls, which my mother and father taught me to have standards, where I was in a household where my dad, remember when bleach used to come in a little granules, my, my, my father used to wipe down the squirting and used to clean, and used to call me, uh, you know, that's the kind of household that I'm used to being in. So unfortunately, because I hold my dad as being a, a high standard for me to, to aspire to, then yes, I do judge those people on there. And yes, I have had baby father drama, but my baby father wasn't really in my, in my life. So in terms of what I have acquired and what I've achieved, 
actually, I do pick him up for that, actually, because he didn't basically contribute and act the way he did, it then made me a, a better person, so to speak. But I have to kind of phrase that correctly. But really, really quickly, I, I don't think I don't think people really understand that men and women, and I'm not being condescending this way to anybody, by the way, I don't think we truly understand that we are different species and that we're just made up differently emotionally, okay? And so basically the, the better that we understand that, and I also keep hearing, I'm not accusing any of the women on here today of saying this, but I'm really sick of hearing women say, yeah, yeah, I want a man. I don't really want a man. I'm actually after a companion and there's a difference between the two. And I think that really what we're struggling to do is that we're not able to actually um, have that communication and, and we're not able to actually build on that foundation to have a worthwhile relationship. So if we look at the relationships of people in the 50s, 60s, my parents, whatever, then a lot of them will actually say to you that their relationships were built on the fact that they were friends before. For example, I don't do dating, I do courting. So anybody out there want to courting and a step forward? I don't do dating because to me, dating is more of a physical thing. Me want to your steer, where you come from. That, that doesn't happen in regards to a dating situation as far as I'm concerned. So for me, sorry, T, I'm going to have a tick list. And T, you know what I'm like as well. You know, I say, I'm not giving nobody a chance. You know? I blow them way in the water. So for me, that is really important. And because I'm quite a complex character myself, and because, to be honest with you, I know that men are intimidated by me, but that's because they haven't had the chance to actually probably give me a chance, per se. But the little and the little, yeah, when well, you say it, it doesn't really work for me because I'm, I'm, I'm not on that level. Not at the age of 45. I've just washed my hair, sorry. <laughs> so, hence, hence the scarf on the head, which is what I was trying to explain. Oh, no, no, I see under this. It's lockdown, isn't it? Um, but yeah, so that was my, my contribution. But I, I do realise, Tony, when you're talking about, and Theo, when you're talking about all the, the ego stuff and whatever, um, apparently, according to the, the guys that, that know me and don't, apparently I'm scary because I'm really intimidating. I'm not intimidating. You are intimidated. So sorry about that, mate. But um, but yeah, it, that's how it is. Sarah, you intimidate me, Sarah. I'm scared of you. No, I it. No, I would. No, I would it. But yeah, so that's why it was. And to Yvonne, I'm really sorry. Honestly, like I said, I've just washed my hair. And Show I, us the locks, man. Show us the locks. I just had man. to. I had to contribute. So thank you very much. <laughs> No worries. Thank you so much for coming on and coming on camera because we was having a little conversation with him. Who are you? <laughs> Show yourself. But Show us the lux, so man. Much. Thank you. The contribution has been good. Listen, we got a message. Now, guys, we have gone way over. Oh, wow. So, yeah, way over. So <laughs> we're going to wrap it up on the hour. All right. We're going to wrap okay. it up on the hour. Okay, so I've got Chris G here in Facebook. Hello, good evening, Chris G. He says, in my opinion, to be honest, I believe if two mature adult wise people meet up and want to have a relationship, it is important that they have a conversation, uh, starting with your background and realistic expectations of each other. Uh, the wants, needs, and see if you are on the same page. It is extremely intelligent and honest to know what you want for yourself and that's what what chris is saying um there was a message here and i know i'm kind of singling out the men because i want the men to have a voice i think it's important um there was one by black tan but I can't, yeah uh black tan says the way i see if a man approaches you with respect then it should be given back be respectful and let him down easy Again, I hit ego in there as well. So there you go. <laughs> I'm just saying. I'm just saying. Uh, and, and you know, I, I feel like in part of this conversation, it's, it, I almost feel like what, what you guys are saying, and you can correct me if I'm wrong, is that we as women need to start rubbing men down. Oh, <laughs> oh, and, and making all these allowances. And, and, and I ain't got I, I just don't have the time. I don't. No, we're not saying that. We're not saying that. Because, you know, we're not we, saying that. men are all. I like to rub the woman down. <laughs> we're not saying that. We're not saying that. Let my hands work. I love to rub a woman down. We're not saying that, everyone. Everyone, what we're saying is that what Krista says. Is that what Krista says? Mm -hmm. we're, we're old, mature people. We're older, mature people. Yeah. We're wiser, we're mature. But what I've. What, 
I've get, what I've seen, what I've heard, some women, not all, some women haven't matured. They haven't grown up in terms of their outlook on things, their expectations on things. They, some women think that they have, they all, they, they've got it all together. They are okay. It's, I'm okay. It's you that's got the problem. They haven't checked themselves. I know you're looking at me strange because you've checked yourself. So you've learned over throughout life your mistakes and you've grown and you said, you know what? Let me improve on this. Let me improve on that. Some people and men as well, they don't, they don't take the correction. So someone says, you know what? This is the reason why I'm leaving you because you're not doing X, Y, Z or you haven't done X, Y, Z. But they're like, whatever. They, let, they leave it in the past and they just carry on doing the same thing and thinking, I'm okay. Look at me, I'm, I'm okay. So you reach 45, 50, whatever age you are, and you're still doing the same childish things you were doing in your 20s, thinking that you are okay because you haven't corrected yourself and grown from your mislearned from your mistakes. So and that's and that's what happens. So as, as was it Chris G says about honest and mature adults, just because somebody's old in age doesn't mean they're mature. Well, this is true because this is this is what I I have come to realize with am i muted can you hear me just saying goodbye to chichia oh you okay bye darling thank you for being here thanks for your contribution i'll speak to you tomorrow right okay good night sweetheart right so so i think that i've lost my train of thought but just to go about maturity i think i was talking about i i feel like i feel in my own personal experience of meeting men, and I say young men because I call everybody young because I feel that I'm still young at heart. And so I, I feel like there is a, a clear difference in, in expectation or, on behavior. I do see that there is a difference. And, and, and it has made me look at myself because if I'm meeting somebody who's immature, I am the common denominator. So that's what I'm attracting. But, but then I can meet younger men who have more maturity than the men of my age group, which I then, which is quite difficult for me because I have older children. So if you get in terms of my mindset, so I could meet somebody who's, I don't know, 38, 39 and get on really well, but their age group is near to my sons because they're 34, <gasps> yeah, 34, both of them. And so it's like, mm, that's, it's, it's not gonna work. So, so for me, ideally, I would like somebody who's a little bit older because of, of how my network is and how I would feel. But like I say, I'm, I'm finding it difficult to find men of my age who are mature enough. And, you know, we can hold a conversation without the ego because now you've identified what the issues are. Now I understand, oh, that's the ego, right? The, that ego needs to go because I'm, I'm not in it. I'm not interested in your ego. I'm interested in getting to know you as a person. So would anybody else, Lorraine, you look like you wanna come in, come in. Yeah, I wanted to say on that about the age thing. I'm finding personally myself, that men my age are usually have been in long-term relationships and come out of them, same as myself. But I feel like they're now like, wanna relive their youth because they're 45, 50, 55, haven't been single for the last 15, 20 years. And they're like, yeah, I just want a, an F-ting. Nah. I'm not That's about what I was going to say. It's like, men, it's like their maturity level goes back because yeah. they found this new found freedom. They're having some sort of midlife crisis. And, and for me, I've had that. I've come out of I've had the long term relationship. Doesn't mean to say that I necessarily want to go wild <laughs> and sleep with every man, but I'm, I'm coming across <laughs> men that that's what they want to do relive their youth. But even. 
because earlier Theo know. said maybe we should drop our list. I was thinking, okay, well maybe I should think about dropping my list. But then I thought, but how am I going to drop this list where there's there's no men anyway? Because the ones that are single are reliving their youth. So where am I going to find where am I going to find this guy? <laughs> <laughs> all the guys, all the nice ones, they're already taken. They're married already. They're gone. I might have to get myself a couple of cats. <laughs> uh, you come a spinster. So um, can I can I come in there? Yeah, you can. Go ahead, Theo. So um, I didn't say drop the list. I said put the list to the side. I said put the list to the side and get to know the person, and then but always keep your red flag up. That's what I said. Put the list to the side. I didn't say drop it. Get to know the person because if you're, if you're checking them as soon as they come in and you. You haven't really gotten to know them because you're a serious said she's gonna interview them on the first date. So the guy that's asked the question correctly the first time. Oh well, that's that's a no-no. So in terms of like the guy reliving his youth after being in a 20-year relationship, as we said earlier, it's a it's a man thing, it's an ego thing. You know, it makes us feel like we're men, you know, because men, how how we are how we are raised, it's about how much girls you can get. And all that stuff. That's how we are taught from it. Teams, all up, the competition. How much girls have you had? How much this you have? Some guys is how many children you've got, and all this kind of stuff. It's, it's a competition. It's an ego thing. So when a guy's been in a twenty-year relationship, the last thing he wants to do is go back into another long-term relationship. He's gonna want to go out there and and be wild for a little bit, and then settle back down. It's just. It's like a woman coming out of a long-term relationship. She doesn't want to jump straight back into one because she's been hurt or whatever's yeah. happened. So they want to have a little, might not have to go on dating, but guys are different. Guys need to go on date and need to do all that, go out with the guys, have a drink, go to the club, pick up girls, do that. And then eventually they realize, I don't want this. Then they start to settle down again. Some, some guys, some guys enjoy it so much that they find it hard to come out. Mm. So can I just give my, my experience? Because I think Lorraine has kind of described me to a T. So I've come out of a, a 16 year relationship. I'm in, that, I'm in that 45 to 50 age range. And um, yeah, have I turned into a player? No. Am I looking for that long-term commitment? Um, maybe, but you know what? I just want to meet somebody. I just want companionship as somebody said. I want somebody yes, who's, who's I, I just want to, I want to be able to go, you know what, I'm at a point in my life where I want to meet somebody and get along. Yeah, I'm not complicated. I can show you lo lots of nice things and I can, you know, um, be jovial, be funny. Um, I love to sit and snuggle and watch a movie with popcorn. Um, you know, so there's a lot about me, but ultimately I just want companionship. And it's literally a case of saying, before the woman comes at me and says, oh, are you looking for marriage? I'm like, hang on a second. Before you get to that, that issue of marriage, let's just get this straight. I want to see if you and I can sit in a room together for four or five hours and just get along and be happy and enjoy our company. And four or five weeks down the road, we can have a kiss and we can get in the back row of the cinema and you know, whatever leads to whatever leads. But I don't want to be like within like two weeks, you're going, so what are your views on marriage? No, don't go there. Let's just okay, get along. I just feel like we can't win. I just feel like we can't win really because I'm someone who I don't get approached at all. I just don't get approached by guys. I don't know. I've never really been approached that much by guys, to be honest with you. I just haven't. Yeah. Even the man I ended up married, marrying, I saw him in the club from afar. How he ended up getting my number is another story. But the point is, even he didn't approach me. But do you know what I found? I found that, okay, I was married for like 12 years. And then when I got a divorce, then I see guys coming to me saying, oh, if I oh, if I knew there was going to be any cracks, I would have put my, you know, my hat in the ring to let you know how much I love you. But now I done gone and married this woman over here and got children and I feel like I'm stuck. And I'm like, I'm not interested. I'm not interested in your stuck ways, yeah? 
And then after that, I was like single, not that I didn't go dating and stuff, but I was single for four years. And now that I'm in a relationship, another set of guys are saying, yeah, I was watching you. And I'm like, there's no point in telling me now because I'm kind of like off the table. It's like, I can't win. And as somebody said, is that four years when I was meeting guys, it was all of these immature 40 something year olds who, as you said, have been in long relationships, just got out of it, trying to be pick me again. And I don't want that. So then the next range of people for me to look at is either in the young thirties who've got no children and I don't really want to deal with that or guys who are going 60, which, you know, is a little bit too old for me to be honest. So I was kind of like stuck between a rock and a hard place. How do you, as a 40 plus year old woman, get into a relationship? Because, you know, at work, that's not really going to work out for me. I don't go clubbing like I used to, but it's not as if anyone really approaches me. How do you find somebody? I've had a stalker a couple of times, you know, at the station, running me down, saying they've been looking for me and all this. I've had stalkers, but I've never really had people guys who could really approach me and I, I like to feel like I'm very approachable and I, I don't care as, as Yvonne said before I don't really care what people are wearing I like conversation so you know I've got to have a good conversation with someone before I could even say that I'm overly attracted to them so it's not so much the physicality of the person I'm into people who've got a high EQ if they've got a high EQ then it's on how do I win it's 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 where you go as i think tony said it if you go in if you want an elite person you go to the place where the place where the guys are so if you want a certain type of guy you go to places where you're interested in so if you like art you go to a gallery you see guys in the gallery you will speak but if you want a regular guy you go to the club the club is the last place you should be looking to find anybody. The club was the club was i know i'm not i know i'm just saying so when people go out they they go to clubs I say, you know the best place to meet some people? In the shopping hall. At the, sh at, at the shopping. Yeah. Shopping. Down the aisle. Down the aisle. Looking in people's baskets still. Just yeah. down the aisle, just talking because, because there's no pretense. You're, you're, you're not, your guard's not up. You're not on guard. You just relax. You're doing your thing and you can strike up a conversation. Just strike up a conversation. It's simple. Oh, Oh, what's that? That's a good, that's, that's a good thing. Have you tried that to eat with that? Just strike up a conversation because that's you being real. You're not in a club. You're not dressed up. You're not on your guard and the guy's trying to check me. You're just talking to each other. Just like Tony says, you're getting to know somebody. Get to know I've them by that. talking. I'm I've at barbecues. That. I'm chilling. I'm just, yeah, you're just chilling. Just, you're just I'm talking. Just chilling. And still they're like, that. yeah, but that's still, bar, but, you're, but you're still it. out in a social environment. You know, if you like, as I said, if you like art, if you like museums and you go to, you go to those places, you'll see single guys in those places who have similar interests. But if you're so going to the club side. and you're going to all these things, you're going to find all these other guys that's partying, looking to sleep with every different girl that moves. So you go to something, but if you meet someone at, at shopping, you're down the shopping now, you're not, you're not even dressed that way. You're just out, you know, and you're out in your clothes, just doing your thing. And someone's talking to you. Because you know what, 90% of the time, that's how the guy's gonna see you anyway. They're not gonna see you dressed up, dolled up every day. You're gonna have your head wrapped like Sarah most of the time. It's They're not wrapped, be, it's a towel. Well, yeah, whatever, a towel on your head. <laughs> but that's how we're gonna see you anyway, with a towel or a head wrap or whatever. 90% of the time, that's how we're gonna see you. So if you're in the shopping aisle and we're talking to you in the shopping aisle and we're striking up a conversation, take it from there. I wouldn't necessarily agree with the shopping thing. I'll be honest with you. I think I do think you could bump into it, literally anyone, anywhere. You can do. Thing. I'm not so sure just because you go to somewhere that's elite. Man made the money, money never made the man. No, so I'm not saying elite, Sarah. I'm saying places of interest that you are interested in. Okay, then yes, yes. So if it's somebody that you're that interested sense. in, you see a man in a similar place where you are interested in, you've got something in common there, isn't it? There's a commonality there. I am just very dubious because some men damn lie. So I think that yeah, some... But so no, I get that. I, I, I get that you also have to have an open mind, but I'm yeah. just there is also the thing that people, as we said before, we covered this before. Sometimes what you see is not what you get. And of course, about the tick list, that is one of the reasons probably why people do do the tick list. 
Because if you lie, you know, me want to find out if yeah, you lie. Yeah, but you will no find that out. You will find that out in conversation, isn't it? That will come out by getting to know Sometimes it does. Sometimes it does. But you know what? It, it, sometimes it, it, it doesn't always, it's not always that apparent. Your teeth, your teeth and your tongue are quite close together. What your teeth are so yeah, bad. But as I said, you can't, so you can't, said, you, you, some, you, you can't, you've got to give somebody a chance. So if somebody is a liar, it will come out. It, it will, will come, come out. out. They will, yeah, that, that Eventually, yeah. Will it will come out. So yeah, you, you, can't, you can't start off with, this guy might be lying. Because you're on a, you're on a, you're on a no win there. You've got to give everybody a fair chance. You have to build an equal playing field, yeah. I think. Yeah, so it's you've got to give everybody a chance. If you someone to say that you're a liar, you, 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 you've got to have an open mind. Yeah. But you need to listen. And, and that's okay, then maybe lie is a strong one, but I do think sometimes that people, and I guess that goes back to the ego thing, sometimes what you see is not what you get. And, and I think that everybody that plays a game initially. That works both ways. That works both Absolutely. ways. Absolutely. It works so both ways. Women really will pretend. Well, as I said, it's about getting to know somebody. Yeah, it's about spending time, time and beyond. getting to know somebody. So if somebody's talking to you, talk to them. Talk yeah. to them. Simple. Just talk to them. That's how you get to know people. Women say this communication to communicate. A man's talking yeah, I've, talk I've met a few geezers but, in a couple of shops, so yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Sorry. <laughs> right. Let's okay, Theo. Uh, Go on. I've done. I've done what Theo said. I've approached guy. In, I approached the guy in the supermarket just before lockdown. I've yeah. done that. I I don't care where you are. If I think to myself, I wouldn't mind actually getting to know you because that's what I'm after as well, companionship, and I like to get to know someone. Because if you've been watching the show since I've been in it from the, near the beginning, you'll hear that the most important thing for me is friendship. It's always friendship first. And I'm telling you that in my experience, men, the men that I've approached first, they don't like it. Men do not approach me. I don't know why. I've been told it's because I'm a peacock, apparently. Men do not approach me and they don't like me approaching them either. So, so what do you do? What do I do? But that again is an ego thing, isn't that? That the man is supposed to hunt and all that sort of stuff. I'm not. I can't yeah. be playing these games. What which one do you yeah. want, guys? T, what do you want? Tony, what do you want? Let me know. Let us know. Yeah. See, see, at the beginning. Let of me answer time. now. Hold Let on. Let me answer now. Hold Hold on. On. ask me a direct question. Me you know what? <laughs> we have actually got one minute left, and this is why I wanted to intervene. So what I want to do is bring that question in for next week. I really do want to bring that question. We start with, we're all in the Zoom room next week and uh, we're going to go hammer and tongs uh, next week. So we're going to start with Sarah's question next week. I did want to end, there's some guys who have put some um, comments in the thread and Chris G again says he thinks it's personal. there is a difference between, um, he says he knows what he wants. So, um, he feels that everybody should know what they want before they go into relationship. Blackatan is saying companionship or relationship, like the lady said, there is a difference. Uh, Chris is saying, obviously, look out for any red flags as there is a lot of mental health, alcohol and drug addiction in the community because they look normal at first and then there are major problems to follow. Um, Black of says, I disagree. I go to a I go to a club because I want to remain grounded. Okay, what club is that? Anyway, and <laughs> Stephen Morgan says this has been very interesting. Stephen from Birmingham might contribute next time. Stephen from Birmingham, Stephen Morgan, you are very welcome to come in to the Zoom room next week. We are looking for men who are willing to talk yeah. because, as you can see. Um, we have two, we had five or six uh, in the Zoom room uh, last week and I know that one has had trouble getting into the Zoom room, but we are looking for men who want to talk and are willing to contribute to the conversation um, because we want answers and we want to make changes. We, you know, we are looking for companionship and, but we are also looking to find out the reasons why it's not happening so that we can make the changes. So this is now one minute past one. We are one hour over. I normally go half an hour over at tops. This is coming on like the first show that went over by two and a half hours <laughs> for ages, right? But we're not doing that tonight. I wanna to thank you all for joining. It's been a very, very interesting conversation. Lots have come out of this conversation tonight. I want to thank you for your honesty. 
uh, putting yourself on the line and being open uh, to have this conversation. So we will can I get Lorraine? Out. Can I get Lorraine's Insta account? Because I want to see what that's about. Please. <laughs> You know what? Because of men like Tony is exactly the reason why my Insta account and my Facebook account are not linked. If you try to find me through Facebook on my Insta account, you'll come across an account that is me and my daughter. My name and my identity on Instagram is nothing like my Facebook account because I am not your sex toy. Okay. <laughs> I want to no. get to know you. <laughs> no, you don't. If you want to get to know me, then message me on, on Messenger and we will have a conversation. <laughs> okay? Look, at, you see that name there underneath? It says Tony, aka Pugilist Boy. Go check out my Instagram, yeah? I don't want to check out your Instagram. There's nothing <laughs> there that interests oh, dear. me. Nothing at all. <laughs> <laughs> oh oh hilarious. Uh, <laughs> you know what guys always stay to the end of the show always because there's always something <laughs> 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 uh, guys I want to thank you listen I love you guys stay blessed stay safe uh, we'll, we'll be back here next week between the hours of 10 and midnight and possibly go over but thank you guys we're all in the zoom room next week and so I will send out the individual groups. Theo, are you in the mail group? I've put a group on Messenger. Um, a... I haven't seen it. All right, I'll have a look. I think what we might I might do is set up some WhatsApp groups so we can so we can kind of have all the um the <clears throat> links and everything before. But anyway, guys, thank you so much. Uh, Sarah, thank you for joining us. I do hope you'll come back next week. I love you. <laughs> <laughs> Theo's Fia, probably Theo's probably thinking, oh no, nah, don't no, I love Sarah, man. Come back next week, Sarah. I love you. Listen, you know love Karen, you, my darling. Thank you for being here this good week. Night, you good, good night, everyone. Good, good, good night, good night. Rain and Barbara. Good night. Good night. Good night. Good night. Bye, Lorraine. Good night, everyone. Good night. Good night. I left your message, Tony. Good night. I'll see you next week. Ciao. I left a message on your Insta, Tony. Okay, nice one. Yeah? Respect. Blessings, my brother. Bye, okay, ladies. Yeah. Good night. Good night. Good night. Good night.